welcome to the premiere episode of the Queer Chronicles of the Strixhaven Quartet. I am your dungeon master and your friend sometimes when you're not telling me what to do in chat and uh, your witch queen of the day. I don't know, I'm Savvy at uh, Savvy Seaworth on the internets and I'm here to run some Dungeons and Dragons for my friends. Uh, but before we do that, let me tell you a little bit about what we got going on on the channel the rest of the week because it's not much because some of us are traveling or having people travel in town to see us and we can't stream while it's happening. Um, we've got this today. I'm so glad you're all here. Yeah, we've been looking forward to this for like a solid months, I think. I'm very, very, very excited that it's finally here. Um, you can join us tomorrow for Tabletop Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern time here. Same place, same time, just a slightly different day. Um, it might be masks tomorrow, not 100% sure because some of the cast is going to be missing, but we'll find out and we'll do something with the Tabletop Tuesdays cruise. Keep an eye out on our Twitter. Um, you can also join our Discord. Our schedule is there. Um, all the links for all that stuff are in the chat currently, or uh, they're down below our faces on our Twitch drop page as well. Um, for the end of the week, we'll be dark, so we won't have anything Thursday, Friday, Saturday, um, because some of us are busy in the meat space. Uh, but we'll be back on Sunday for our regularly scheduled shows. I think that's it. I don't think I have anything else to announce. If I do, someone will remind me at some point. Uh, I'm going to let my wonderful friends that are right here around me introduce themselves, tell you who they are, uh, where you can find them on the internet, and uh, perhaps the name of their character, who they're playing today. Uh, starting with Rob. Oh, gosh. Hello. Hi. It's me. Rob, or bonus stage Rob, or bonus underscore stage underscore Rob, depending on where you look on the internet. I am forever and always your cool bisexual vacation dad. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I am a writer and producer of TTRPG content here on Twitch. Um, I am in a Pathfinder game every other Saturday, except for this Saturday, because of what Savvy just said, because they're very smart and cool and, and know what they're talking about. Um, but that's Saturday nights, not the other one, but the Pathfinder one. Um, I am here every Monday for Strixie Haven things. Um, and on Friday, uh, I will be running a monster of the week one shot on twitch.tv slash Stella Luna, uh, called crisis at crater Lake, uh, stars a team of park rangers for the national park service which uh, in this game is a clandestine branch of the U.S. government that protects the common folk from supernatural threats. It's going to be a blast. Sid's in that. Sid's real cool uh, and good and awesome. And um, I think that's really what I got going on for now. Um, I am playing Willoughby Wanderfoot, uh, a very small Allen. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be wonderful. Uh, next up is Rachel. Hi, I'm Rachel Elizabeth. You can find me here on Twitch at Rachel Elizabeth, where I, you know, I will get back to streaming eventually. Uh, you know, life. But you can find me here on Mondays for the foreseeable future. And on Sundays, I'm on LB Hack em Up's channel with, uh, with Savvy <laughs> doing whatever it is we do there. Masks for now, eventually D&D &D again. Um, and tonight... I will be playing Soraya Vale, the Water Genasi Druid. We're all extremely excited to have you as a fixture on the channel for real this time. Uh, next up is Sid. Hey, I am Christina Sid. You can find me on the Twitters at Greek Sid. Basically just talking about the fun stuff I do here on the internet uh yeah i'm here a couple nights a week uh when i'm not here you can find me on wednesdays over on twitch.tv slash critical misses playing some good good queer society uh at eight o'clock eastern uh yeah otherwise uh, on thursdays i run our game of urban shadows uh, i'm gonna be here friday i'm here every other saturdays and on sundays and on mondays hey hi i'm here a lot um and i have a good good one shot coming up with robo yay he already talked about that, so it's it's all good. It's it's 
it's it's gonna be really fun i can't fucking wait and i spent way too much money on the cosplay anyway um tonight i will be playing giselle uh god what is her last name winter sweet there we go um she is a tabaxi sorcerer excellent and last but certainly not least val hello everybody eyes hello everybody i'm val uh you can find me at the kraken's crown uh on twitter and twitch i am here pretty much exclusively playing and running games uh i run two games on the channel one on fridays uh that's gonna be starting up again in may uh premiere of neon gods which is uh going to be our good society hack uh based on the wicked and the divine graphic novel series of graphic novels so uh come hang out with us for that it's gonna be a bunch of uh reincarnations of gods as celebrities and they're you know doing whatever we're doing we, we're, we're still doing our session zero and stuff and figuring out everything else but it's going to be probably lots of romance uh backstabbing and uh and godly stuff uh and then on saturdays i run a game called saturday night star power which is a fate game based on a series like jojo's bizarre adventure and jujutsu kaisen uh so you can come hang out with us that on every other fridays alternating from pathfinder um, saturday <laughs> Sorry? Saturdays. Did I say Friday? I meant Saturday. What are days? What, what is time? A miserable Friday. little pile of secrets. Time is But enough talk. How about you? Uh, and tonight I am going to be playing Law, the uh, Tiefling Artificer. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, so that's your cast of characters. And uh, I'm so ready to get started. Um, before we start, uh, for everyone out there in our audience, I will pull this up in the chat for you. Uh, we have a couple of different chat commands for our store, um, but because I'm a chaos monster, uh, I have activated all of the Dungeons and Dragons redemptions that we've ever had on this channel. Um, we were doing this uh, during our last D&D show and we're gonna do it now because I, don't care. <laughs> Is this gonna break my game? Yes. Excellent. Um, so we have a bunch of chat redemptions you can spend your uh, chat XP on. You can uh, help somebody recharge a spell slot or ability. Um, you can give somebody a little bit of healing. You can give a character an inspiration. They can reroll one die. Um, as always, you can spend a bunch of XP to name an NPC that will, at my discretion, show up in the game, probably wearing the funny hat or speaking in a funny voice, because those are my favorite things to do. Uh, and then last but certainly not least, you can spend a bunch of channel XP to buy the party a loot drop. Uh, how that will work, so we're all clear, is I have the Dungeon Master's Guide, I have the random magic table items, we'll just roll and get whatever comes up. <laughs> Sometimes it's little things. Sometimes it's very big things. Um, I think it's great. I love a little bit of chaos. So watch our show and get some XP and then spend it to send us into complete and total chaos. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, are you guys ready to get started? Okay, it's... <laughs> Somebody's already named named. Let's be gone. <laughs> Very oh, excited. No. Thank you, Z. <laughs> Love you bunches. I'm glad you're here. Let me see if I can find some more like upbeat music here. I've got my music going through Spotify if anybody is uh wanting to listen along. That's an incentive to join the Discord, right? Sounds like a good deal to me. Mm-hmm. This you can great. listen along to to the tunes. It's great. All right. Yeah. Sorry. Here we go. Majestic marble archways. Tomes seemingly stacked for miles, and the infectious energy of hundreds of young adults fill the Biblioplex, the grand library at the heart of Strixhaven University. The sights, sounds, and sparks of magic in the air are wondrous. 
Your acceptance letter stated that you must report to the Biblioplexus Hall of Oracles to receive instructions on new student orientation. The hall sits at the center of the Biblioplexus first floor, and you can already see students gathering there. The Biblioplex is three stories high with enchanted stairs that reshape into ramps and lifts for full accessibility. And customized teleportation circles painted onto the floor near each staircase and at the top and bottom of the entrance steps that allow easy transport around the building. So, you've all been accepted. You've all picked your classes, bought your books, picked up your uniforms, moved into your dormitories in the main campus. And it is the day of orientation. Who's early? For sure, Willoughby. <laughs> I feel I feel called out. It's 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 him. Uh, so give us break us off a piece of Willoughby. Tell us what Willoughby looks like and how Willoughby sort of uh, makes his way into the uh, the grand biblioplex at the center of campus. So Willoughby one hundred percent arrived at least fifteen minutes early. Um, he is a uh coming coming up the stairs like sort of hopping the way that birds do sometimes uh equal parts bird equal parts uh he's really small <laughs> um he's just sort of like jumping up bright-eyed bushy feathered um this tiny little owlin uh and in like just the the brightest they're common clothes but they're like freshly laundered bright colored uh and he's got his little backpack that's about as big as him and he's just, oh excuse me excuse me oh uh, i hope i'm not late <laughs> and uh yeah he is just very excited to be there and uh just completely wide-eyed at the wonders of uh the biblioplex which i imagine is fairly uh fairly extravagant um and he's just sort of uh, he's a good boy he's there i'm sorry this is the first two minutes but if anything happens to willoughby i will kill everyone here and then myself i'm sorry <laughs> see those are the two reactions my first reaction was i want to bully him so Boy. <laughs> no. I'm joking. I would. Never. I would. <laughs> oh boy! I hope nobody bullies me. <laughs> All right, Willoughby. Uh, you make your way uh, up these stairs, which, uh, as you hop up them, shift a little bit on the side that you're on, so they are smaller. Um, so you oh. can sort of hop Ooh. up uh and make your way into the uh the grand library um anybody else early for orientation no giselle is probably early to like scope some things out like see what this this whole library thing was about like see who's coming in and out like you know check out some of the the, the other students that are going to be there but she's probably just out like directly outside like with a cigarette and a cigarette holder just smoking and like scoping everyone out okay give us a little bit of what giselle looks like but giselle's about like five nine, five ten, a little taller than your average tabaxi. Um, lithe, lean, sort of a like a calico, like white and like yellow and brown. Um, with uh, she keeps like her hair a little longer, it's a little darker, um, and she is dressed to the fucking nines. Uh, just the most elaborate like bodycon dress um just bedecked and like you know very little neckline lots of necklaces uh she's got like multiple piercings in her little kitty ears um and she literally has the most amazing manicure you've ever seen um it's everything is bejeweled everything is bedazzled everything is shiny 
podcast. In a word, extra. Yeah. <laughs> She'll fit right in here. <laughs> uh, anybody else on time or running in at the last moment? Soraya had every intention of being early or even on time, um, but she got into a very intricate discussion with a tree. Uh, it was one-sided, but um, she'll come wandering in after she realizes that she's late. All right. What's what's Soraya about? What's she look like? Um, she's about five foot two. She's a water genasi, so her skin's a pale bluish green. Uh, hair is a little bit darker, uh, greenish blue. She's got like piercing blue green eyes. Um, she's just petite um, and just looks distracted all the time. She'll be having a conversation with you, and she just she promises she's probably paying attention, but she also might not be. She's thinking about 17 other things while doing her best. Um, and she's dressed like girl at Coachella. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> it brings up such a vivid <laughs> mental picture. Okay. Um, finally, making their way in law. Law over slow. comes running across the quad uh, dressed like so Law's tiefling uh, really bright red hair white horns uh, it has a kind of a very grungy kind of aesthetic but like Hollister grungy like the, like the clothes are new but made to look old uh, and uh, <clears throat> but clearly very disheveled and kind of running very quickly across the uh the quad towards the the building uh where, where orientation is and uh i imagine greets their uh twin sister uh order who's probably looking very angry at them yes uh two things one z thank you for the gift so we really appreciate them um, and also, Valmadir, can you turn your mic up in yeah, OBS just... a little bit? You're a little yep. quiet for everybody. Thank you. All right. Um, so, yeah, we have uh, Giselle sort of scoping place outside. And I think you probably see Law, um, this sort of bright red hair, tiefling horns, uh, running. Lamas! <laughs> he kind of like stumbles a little bit and looks so. They... Did I miss it? Am I late? No. You have five minutes. Oh, good. What? I've been here all day. You know, come visit me? I didn't know you were here. I've been standing right here the whole time. The just, whole time. I just got here. I just, like, right now, you saw me come running up. I stole the gold. Fine. Let's go. I don't understand how you're so early after we were out so late drinking last night. I feared that you would oversleep. You know what, never mind. We'll talk about it later. From the top of the steps, you both hear, you're late, both of you. Oh, As you fuck. see I... uh, a tiefling at the top of the stairs, indistinguishable from law. <laughs> Except I imagine dressed much nicer. Dressed very nicely, um, sort of nice, like uh, button up shirt brooch at the uh at the neck um nice like leather uh breeches tall boots but exact same red hair horns same face hello good morning i have been here the whole time yes we know you're blowing smoke in everyone's faces get inside did you save me a seat at least i don't want to have to stand in the back there aren't seats. It's rotating groups. Did you read the the scroll that came? I left it. I thought I'd had it in my bag, and I guess well, I did. Of course you it. did. Here's mine. Thank you. Good to see you, Giselle. Hi. And the three of you stragglers make your way into the big hall. Um, so all of you are kind of 
milling around uh, in. Oh, I can show you the map. Oh, I can show you a map. This is exciting. It's a map. It's a map. It's a map. Ooh. It's a map. So, that bottom part's the first floor. You all come in from the south, entering those doors. Uh, right around you, you see a bunch of, uh, on one side to your left, there are sort of these like lounge chairs and couches with like tables, low wooden tables in between. Um, on the right side, there are a bunch of tables with chairs surrounding them um, right outside the Biblioplex Cafe. Um, so you can sort of mill around there. You can also make your way in. Um, there are a couple of uh, librarians um, who are, they're sort of all dressed the same in like this like Strixhaven um, sort of uniform. So they're easily identifiable with the big silver uh, Strixhaven star kind of emblazoned across the chest. And they're sort of filing students in to the building to that center room where the Hall of Oracles is, where you are supposed to go for your orientation. Um, so assuming you all follow instructions. Um, to you, the letter. He's such a good boy. Um, the the four of you with this uh, with this crowd, and then uh, Law with your sister, kind of in not really in tow. She probably has you in tow. Um, you all uh, make your way in, so that you and you can see it on the map. Um, but there is sort of this central uh, walled off area with like a large arching doorway. Um, on this side and then on the other side of the uh, the Hall of Oracles. It's this little bit right here. Um, but there is a there's like a soft like blue glow um, coming from that uh, central area. And as you make your way in, um, you see, I'm trying to find the description. Um, you see uh, a few things. This is a hall um, and sort of, all around on the walls are these very large um, statues that if you read any of the nameplates on um, are all of the past Strixhaven oracles um, who are essentially the leader of the university chosen by the founders of the university. Um, so there are lots of them all sorts of different uh, folks from all sorts of different heritages and backgrounds um, have been the Oracle of Strixhaven at one time, but there are these tall, these sort of like towering marble statues. Um, but in the center of the hall, um, there is this blue ball of energy um, that is just sort of pulsing with this like magical blue light. Um, did I, Has anyone like read up on Strixhaven? Do you think? Who knows? So Willoughby probably. Oh yeah. Like everything I could read. Everything I could get my hand on. Okay. So you definitely know this. Her sister probably like force fed her a lot of this to like. Right. Because you have siblings. You must attended. do the best. Make the most of this experience. That whole thing. So. All right. Um, so a couple of you will recognize this for what it is. Um, this is the Strixhaven Snarl. Um, so a little bit of background for player information on Strixhaven. Uh, the the plane that Strixhaven is on, we're in Magic the Gathering universe, baby. Um, the plane that Strixhaven is on um, sort of underneath the, uh, the fabric of reality a little bit, there is this thing called the weave, um, which is sort of where all magical energy comes from. Um, sort of the, the magical reality of this world that is sort of just under the surface. Um, there are places where, and so Willoughby and, and Giselle, at least you would probably know this, um, there are places where the this sort of fabric of magic, there are places where there are either tears in it or there are knots and, and tangles um, like you would have on like a loom. Uh, and they create these snarls, um, which are like, uh, they're, places where uh, of like great magical energy where magic right around them is either distorted or is amplified or very strange things happen around them and there is one right at the center of Strixhaven. Such a little university history for you. 
I'm sure Willoughby can probably like spout verbatim from the book what that's about. Um, but so that's that. The other two of you, I, it's a big magic ball. I don't know if you know what it is, but it's pretty for sure. Um, so as you make your way into, let me pull up my, uh, my page here. Um, so as you all make your way into the Hall of Oracles, um, sort of filtered in by a couple of the librarians, um, and as they're kind of doing this in groups, like it's a, a large group, probably 30 students or so with you um, kind of interspersed uh, within, uh, you enter the hall and you hear a voice. Um, you don't know where it's coming from, um, but it sort of rings out over the hall. Let me do something a little calmer here. Not that. That's good. Uh, you hear uh, this rich sort of like soothing voice um, radiate across the hall, almost like it's coming from the snarl itself. Um, and it says to you, brilliant scholars, your attention, please. As you are now Strixhaven University students, this storied biblioplex will be your second home for research, studies, and even leisure. There is just one task to accomplish before you officially embark on your academic journey, a scavenger hunt. Uh, and a small, piece of parchment and materializes in front of each of you. Um, it's got a list of five clues uh, and it's got a symbol sort of printed in ink at the top. Um, uh, the voice rings out again and says, the rules are simple. Each clue on this list will lead you to a different location in the biblioplex. Simply travel to the area each clue represents and perform the action the clue suggests. Time is of the essence. You have only until the end of the day to finish your hunt. Solve as many clues as you can because at each location, you may win a prize. Now, find your teams by the symbol at the top of your parchment and off you go. And don't forget to have fun. And uh, the voice fades. Um, and at the top of each of your parchments is a small printed owl. We are Team Kukovaya. Okay. Did, did you get the owl on yours too? Mm-hmm. Oh. oh, good. We're on the same team. Teammates. Hey, uh, who else has the um the owl? From a crowd of people, you just hear. Oh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, do you have the... Oh, did somebody say they have an owl? 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 Where and are then, you? like, just kind of squeezes in between two people and just, like, pops out. Whoop! Uh, oh, hello! Hi! Do you have an owl? I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I hear you, but I, where are you? Are you invisible? Uh, down here. <gasps> oh! <clears throat> Hello. Oh, no, no. We uh, we are the group with the Kukovaya. We did not say Kukovaya. Oh. Oh, do you have? Oh, oh, oh boy. <laughs> yes. Oh. It's, it's, it is quite funny because I am an owl and I was assigned the owl symbol. Um, But, but yes, it, it looks like we're teammates. Oh, Kuklam, of course. Well, yeah, yeah. come on. <laughs> okay. Uh, what is your name? Oh, <clears throat> and he like sort of like straightens his his shirt a little bit, like you know, brushes down a little bit of wrinkles, uh, and just I am Willoughby Wonderfoot, student of Strixhaven, first year. And you are? And he sort of like flourishes. <laughs> Aren't you the cutest thing? <laughs> I'm Giselle. First year. Well, uh, okay. 
and, nice, um, nice to meet you. I'm I'm Law, also first year. Nice to meet you. This is just a three. Does anyone time. else have the owl? There's an owl right there. <laughs> Hello. Oh, on the paper. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you also have one? Yes. Oh, oh great. It looks like we're teammates. Uh, what is your name? I am Willoughby Wonderfoot. Flourishes again. First year. Oh, so fancy. Um, hi. I'm I'm Soraya Vale. Also first year. Nice to meet oh. you. I'm Giselle. This is not um, law. Hi. Hi. So what are we doing? Uh, they say scavenger hunt, right? Yes, yes, we look for the things and we win prizes. I like prizes. Hmm. Oh. Did I Does miss that come in here? From? You did not. I haven't given you the list yet. I know. Law is just very bad at paying attention to things. Okay, good. It's a character thing. It's not me. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I'm I know glad. it's hard to distinguish between the two, but I'm playing a character with ADHD <laughs> while I have ADHD. Oh Excellent. no. Uh, so I shared with you guys a handout that have the clues. Mm -hmm. um, I'll read them for the chat because they're fun. Um, so there's five of them. I put a note for you guys as well. Um, you can either deduce these by exploring the biblioplex, or if it, it gets to a point where you're like, mm, we don't know, you can do an, a check and I'll help you <laughs> um, with an investigation check. So um, you've got five clues. They are as follows, and you have them written down as well, so don't feel like you have to memorize these. Um, they are, number one, you'll forget all about any trouble or plight when you step forward and are ensnarled in light. Number two, alumni commission works when they retire, seeking promising mages to inspire. Number three, each group deserves a free treat for their investment. Serve up this list and enjoy your refreshment. Number four, these leafy beds aren't what they seem. Give them a pat and see what you glean. And number five, some stars are ancient, enduring, and bright, but others, maybe you, are born on opening night. So, scavenger haunt time. This seems like more of a riddle than a scavenger hunt. I oh, think yes. the scavenger hunt part is the going place to place. Well, it's it's very fascinating because it seems like the first one mentions light and ensnarled. And as you all know, that the blue light in the center of the room is the, the snarl. Strixhaven snarl. And so I think we should all go there. Can we can we start? Are we allowed to start? Soul? Oh, wonderful. And Willoughby just like, you know, scurries off toward that, like with his little paper in hand, like. Oh, After this, okay. can we go to the one with refreshments? I'm kind of hungry. Oh, yes. I think I have that one figured out too. Uh, okay. Willoughby takes, <laughs> Willoughby takes off uh, through the, the Hall of Oracles toward the snarl in the center. Um, the rest of you follow, and you arrive. Uh, what do you do when you get there? Um, so I think he's just going to, like, I, I think he skids to a stop when he gets, like, up to this, like, barrier, and are, now, are these, he, I, I, I'm, like, pointing to it with my, like, finger. <laughs> are, they, are these the statues this? of the, of the founders, or are these, like, like, pillars? Yes, those are the statues. So oh, there's these two the sort statues. of in the doorway, okay. two in the other, and then there are like four each, I think, sort of on okay. the surrounding walls. But those are open um, mm. doorways sort of with a statue on, on each side. Got it. Okay. So I think as soon as he, like, he'll skid to a stop right at the doorway and then just like take one step in because he's, I think he's a little wary to get too close to the snarl. But so he, okay. he just steps into the room, just... Holds the paper up. Okay. 
You hold the paper up, nothing happens. Okay, he steps one more time, holds the paper up. Uh, nothing happens. Clearly, it steps says we have one to be... More <laughs> we have to be ensnarled in the light. I think we have to go closer. Well, well are you sure? I mean, there's no telling what you what, what what would happen if one steps within the tangles in the fabric of reality. I mean, it, would they really allow first years to do that? That seems like such a high honor or potentially- I'll do it. Soraya is already just like walking past him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll follow her to- Just, just has not listened to any of the danger. Is just like, oh, it's pretty. <laughs> there, there are no guards. be careful. There, there are no guards. If it was extremely dangerous, there would be guards. Oh right? yeah, I suppose that makes sense. Yes, or at least some sort of a magical barrier to prevent students from entering it. Like that's that that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, we need to hurry up though because they're gonna get the prize without us. Go on. Oh, oh no. Okay, and so he'll like scurry off after uh, Lawn and uh, Soraya. Law and Soraya um, with Willoughby and Giselle uh, following behind. Uh, you make your way up to the snarl. Um, it's just sort of this big blue ball of sort of crackling energy um, that pulses with light a little bit. Um, and some of the energy seems to like kind of pool around it uh, on the floor a little bit. What do you do? Soraya touches it. Okay. Soraya uh, reaches out and touches the snarl. Um, Soraya, there is just a brief moment where you go totally numb. Like you can't feel anything. You can't feel your body. Um, and you almost sort of lose track of it. Um, and your eyes sort of close and then they open again very, very quickly. Um, all of the rest of you see Soraya um, very briefly just disappear Ooh. and then appear again almost immediately about five feet back, sort of away from the snarl. Um, and Soraya, you can feel your body again, uh, but in your hand is a, sort of a small pouch that wasn't there before. I don't know where they keep them. Stoliko, she got the prize. Do we all get the prize? You can have this one. I think we're on the team, right? Did I, are we competing against each other? Should I be trying to take that? <laughs> no, no, no. We, we're we all on a team. Um, our DM, do we have any sense that we're all supposed to do this or does one person have to do this? Uh, you could open the bag and that might answer your question. Oh. Well, all right. What did you get? She'll open the bag. Uh, you open the bag, and there are four glass vials inside with some kind of red liquid in them. Oh. Ooh, you said so you were hungry. I might not want to eat that just for lunch. Uh, that looks more important. It may be a potion. Maybe. She'll hand them out. Oh. If I stop, thank you. Thank you. Might want to make a check to see what they are. Uh, Can I roll an Arcana check? Arcana yeah. would be good for this. Good. Medicine also, probably. Because it Ooh. potion. First roll! <gasps> First roll! Natural 20! Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. I won't Explain. bother rolling. That's that's a 24. It's very good. Um, they are potions of healing. Oh, yes. Uh, they're good for if we get hurt. Uh, for healing. Oh, excellent. Good to have a bit of first aid handy for our first big adventure as a team. Hmm. They're puny, though. Only the little ones. Well, that's okay, because big things come in very small packages sometimes. Doesn't make them any less capable. And he's just sort of standing proudly. 
No, of course. I mean, they're not very expensive. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, did you want to do clue number three? And and we can do the um, the refreshment one. I, oh, yes, I think if there's please. a commissary, that's what we're looking for. I imagine. Good, good. Maybe we can pick up something to eat, even if it's not part of the price. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess looking around the room, is there anything like that? I'm trying to. Uh, so yeah, when you came in, um, off to one side, you would have noted, um, there is a cafe in, oh, in is, the Biblioplex. Yeah. Um, it is closer to the, uh, the main entrance, but it has all those tables and chairs sitting around outside, and then you can go into, mm. to the actual cafe. Oh, good. I'll use my Starbucks card. No, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> their logo is a literal star. It's a crime. There's no <laughs> Starbucks on this campus. <laughs> Amazing. Starbucks is canon. Got it. Got it. All right. Uh, so you make your way down. The clue being each group deserves a free treat for their investment. Serve up this list and enjoy your refreshment. Um, so you make your way back through the hall toward the Biblioplex Cafe. Um, there are some students sort of sitting around um, at the tables. A few of them are reading, having coffee, having um, like a sandwich, um, that kind of thing. Um, but it is, uh, it's pretty busy in here. Um, as you make your way into the cafe itself, um, you see some students sort of milling around, waiting for orders, um, but there's only one person uh, behind the counter. Um, she is uh, very short, uh, just just tall enough so her um, her head kind of crests the top of the counter. She's only a few feet tall. Um, gnomish, uh, pointed ears, like pixie cut, uh, blue hair, um, big eyes, and smiling, um, but looking a little harried as uh, she is the only one working currently. And there are a lot of people in the biblioplex for orientation today. What do you do? Do you have the prizes? Uh, uh, sorry. Do you have the prizes? Do you have the clues? Yes. Oh, it says go yes. for refreshment. Oh, yes. A little one. He jumps. <laughs> Excellent. Wonderful. I'm a little busy. Uh, you can have your prizes when I'm done. I would be done much faster if you would uh, come behind the counter real quick and just help me unload these sacks. Great, okay, get to work. Oh, okay, it must be a challenge. Willoughby doesn't question it, just scurries behind like okay. the counter. This sort of feels like an unpaid internship situation. We're outlawed in Kaladesh uh, several centuries ago. Uh, yes, we well, we're not in Kaladesh, are we, honey? Right. <laughs> you know, Toto, I don't the, think the, we're in Kaladesh anymore. The, the Kaladeshi invented unions, so. So we should unionize this kind of what I'm. Oh, absolutely. Thinking. Are you having a bad day? Am I having a bad day? Yeah. Oh, no, honey, I'm not having a bad day. Just a little busy is all. And uh, both of my student workers called out sick today. So just me. Oh, no. Can I get a little help with the uh, with the haversacks? Thank you, Alan. What what is your what's what's your name? Willoughby Wonderfoot. Willoughby Wonderfoot. First year. I'm loving your work ethic. I don't know when I sort of decided I was from New Jersey, but I am now. Um, I'm going with it. You sound very familiar. This always <laughs> happens to me. I try to do gnomes and halflings, and they all just sort of end up from New Jersey. I am Isla Fizzbottom, and it is a joy to be working with you. Please roll for me a dexterity check, sir. Oh, yes, it would be my pleasure. Does anyone else go help? Well, well, we'll go help, yeah. Oh, Rhea tries to help. Okay. It's not good. Mostly ends up in the way. Just Giselle goes over and like looks at everyone. Oh, <laughs> Damn, that's a uh, that's a three. It's a three. Okay. Um, 
yeah, everybody else roll a dexterity check as well. Um, but Willoughby, you get right to work. Um, it's it's not fancy or um, <laughs> sort of ordered by any means, but you get everything in your sack unpacked and up on the shelf, mostly just the bottom shelf, but it's all on a shelf and it's out of the bag. <laughs> Who else? Eleven. Eleven? Eleven. Eleven. Mine is also a three. A three, oh, okay. Fuck. So, um, you, between the four of you- I told you. you. <laughs> this is so bizarre. <laughs> between, there was that one natural 20 and then everybody said, eh. Well, we, <laughs> like, we paired off. Yeah, we paired off. Threes, Two threes, elevens, it's great. Two eleven. So, uh, you help uh, Isla, unpack um, as she is sort of uh, putting out orders, uh, unpacking sort of bottles and, and coffee beans. And uh, there's one of the um, the sacks you open and it is very cold inside. Um, you unpack sort of a bunch of um, like wrapped meats and things within the fridge. Um, and uh, when you are done, uh, she turns around, sort of looks at your work. Excellent, wonderful. I thank you all. You have made my day so much better. Keep the sex there for you. There's your prize. Alrighty. Oh. Well, it is our pleasure to help. I, I'm sure we'll be back. I guess it we could use good this in to, here. to store our, our other prizes, right? Uh, I'm going to have somebody roll an arcana check. Willoughby is like fully sticking his head in this sack. Uh, Does that count as an arcana check? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, well, it, it, something will happen. <laughs> I'm down to do, as an artificer. Maybe I know how the stuff works. Yeah. Uh, it's a 12. Okay. Well, no, it's better than mine. It's a 10. <laughs> okay. Uh, Willoughby, you um, you look at the back, and um, it's actually kind of a nice, uh, a nice kind of hefty, like... Um, like faux leather sack. Um, it's got a bunch of pockets on the outside um, and then one sort of big central pocket and you stick your head in um, and you look down and down and down and way, way down to the bottom of a bag that is much bigger on the inside. Um, oh these, are, these are Heward's Handy Haversacks. Oh! Oh, it it seems to it seems to be some sort of a pocket dimension, uh, not unlike a bag of holding, but um, maybe a bit less powerful. Oh yes, uh, my mama she gives me a bigger one for less holidays. I didn't bring it with me though, so this is fine. I'll have to pull up the tavern sacks. They're essentially like mini bags of holding. Yeah, that's what I figured. They just hold Do the less. pockets on the um, outside also function? Uh, yes. So many pockets. Very convenient. Because a lot of the time with a bag of holding, I have trouble finding what I'm looking for because it it will it will be very uh, condensed into one pocket dimension. Extremely helpful, um, but. These pockets will help keep my pencils and my notebooks and anything that's too big. Uh, oh, I could put the potion of healing in here. And he's just going to keep talking about this bag. Super stoked about this bag. I'm loving it. Okay, so I found it. Um, so they they are rare items. Um, so Handy Haversack um, has a central pouch and then two pockets on the side, um, which can each hold 20 pounds of material. Dang. Well, it's like 60 total. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, or 40 total, because there's two. I can't do math. Um, but then a large central pouch um, can hold up to 80. So it's a lot. Um, but then the backpack always weighs five pounds, no matter what. Nice. Just Giselle takes her designer Kaladeshi handbag, <laughs> puts it inside the haversack <laughs> to keep it safe, and then slings the haversack over her shoulder. Okay. Makes sense. Fancy, fancy. Okay, um, you are thanked, um, and Isla uh, ushers you out from behind the counter so she can continue taking orders. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you. 
No, thank you. I like your hair. Oh, thank you. I do it myself. I can tell. Thank you. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, what do, what do you do next? Okay. Do you think they want us to commission artwork? Hmm. Oh, you're referring to clue number two. Um, I, that could be the answer, but I I think, I, hmm. I it would know. take a long time. Yes, I feel like maybe they're referring to the, the, the librarians, potentially, because they're inspiring mages by working in this quite inspiring biblioplex where we are supposed to be studying and 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 um i guess solving clues sometimes and i don't know well now i i didn't really think about artists are we sure it's not just the statues or something for the statues because we don't have to talk to them oh Perhaps because those are retired uh, um, oracles. So I guess that would also make sense. You are all very smart and, and very insightful. Have you guys seen the art gallery yet? Not uh, no, not art yet. Gallery. Yes. Where is it? Oh, I don't remember. I got lost. And that's how I found it? But that's where a lot of student artwork is displayed. Oh. oh. Well, hopefully we'll we'll happen upon it in our travels. I would be very interested in looking at some of this artwork. Let's see if it's any good. Oh yeah, it it probably is the statues. It makes so much more sense. Hey, the leafy bed ones. They have the the little garden things. Yes. Oh yes. Uh, it sounds like we'll be able to give uh, the leaves a pat uh, on the on the northwest corner of the room. There were a couple of like topiaries. I have to go touch topiaries. I'll touch them. I like plants. You were I like talking plants, to a but tree. not that much. <laughs> Do we want to split up and try to knock some of these out at the same time? Huh? Yes, uh, Nomo and I will go look for a stage. Is there something about what is it? What is it? A more an opening night. Yes, that's a stage. Yes, it, it sounds like a performance to me. That makes sense. Um, Soraya, uh, may we go to the the plants to investigate those? Excellent. He just scurries off. Okay. And it didn't take even a whole hour <laughs> for you to split up. <laughs> and I love it. You always okay. know I'm going to be the one that recommends it. Every I know. Time. Every time. We did it. Uh, Yay! So D&D achievement unlocked. You've done it. <laughs> split the party. <laughs> uh, Soraya and Willoughby. Uh, you make your way over uh, to the western side of the biblioplex, um, you pass through um, these, or at least by um, these very tall uh, floor-to-ceiling bookshelves um, that are sort of the the main uh, stacks of the library, um, and then through sort of some some study tables. There's these big like wooden tables with chairs on either side. Um, as you walk through, you hear sort of the the whirring of gears, almost. Um, and coming around one of the stacks um, is. Let's see if I can show you guys the sheet. Did that pop up? Oh yes. Uh, some of you will know what these are. There's a little description there, um, but they're these very tall um, humanoid clockwork 
figures um, that are on very large wheels. Um, and there are a couple of them sort of rolling around through the stacks, um, kind of shelving books, um, putting things away, kind of carrying uh, large stacks of books. Um, and they, as you walk by, they roll by one of them sort of nods to acknowledge you. Um, and keeps going. Um, these are the Cogwork archivists, which at least Willoughby would probably know about, uh, who work in the biblioplex, um, shelving returned books and um, sort of replacing them, keeping all the books in order. Um, that's how they keep them so organized is they have these sort of clockwork uh, people who can work pretty much around the clock, keeping the library in order. Um, they also uh, sort of keep an eye on uh, more rowdy groups of students, um, sort of keeping them quiet, making sure everybody's being respectful of the study space. Um, and you can also ask them for help uh, in addition to the librarians in locating books and finding your way around the stacks and, and things like that. So one of them sort of nods to you um, and then rolls right along with a big uh, stack of books in their arms as you continue past. Uh, and you make your way over to the book gardens. Um, these are uh, a couple of spaces uh, in the uh, the biblioplex where um, there's actually grass, um, a lot of shrubs, and then like a central tree um, that is growing out of them. There are some benches surrounding them, um, but there are um, several students sort of sitting on the grass, sort of reading, um, talking. It's just another uh, different kind of study space um, that students have access to. A lot of the Witherbloom students uh, hang out here. Um, and as you approach, you are almost immediately uh, accosted. Can you guys hear me okay? My Zoom just froze. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. That's cool. You're all frozen on my screen. As long as you can hear. Whoa! Oh no. Cool. What? That that you're frozen. I said, oh no. Oh no. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but as long as you guys can hear me. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, you're almost immediately um, accosted uh, by a very tall uh, student. Um, he is an orc. Um, very tall, very broad, green skin, big glasses, um, holding a couple of uh, books in his arms. And on top of the books, um, he has a stack of flyers. Um, and he kind of uh, walks up to the two of you. First years. Yes. Yes. Will it be Wonderfoot? First year. Uh, pleasure. Willoughby Wanderfoot, uh, my name is Urs Talk. Here, and he hands you a flyer, uh, and it is uh, emblazoned at the top with a big green logo. Um, it says, join the Fantastical Horticulture Club. Um, and there are some drawings of uh, plants and, and vines all around the um, outside. Uh, and it's got his, uh, his name on it, as well as the recruiter. I'll put his name in chat because it's hard to spell. Thank you. So if you're looking for a club to join, it's a good one. And I can vouch. Well, oh, appreciate that. Uh, we are very excited to, uh, my friend and I, to see what the college has to offer and the different clubs and whatnot. Excellent. Oh. My name's on there, so let me know if you want to know more. Okay. You're Thank a you. very nice shade of green. Thank you. She just like will wander off. <laughs> <laughs> and Serena wanders off. Um, but you make it to the book gardens uh, for your next clue. Uh, what What do you do? Um. I think on the way, uh, he's going to say to Soraya, "Oh, you would you would really like this. It, it sounds like it's it's all about plants and magical applications of horticulture and 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 you said that you like plants. I I think I saw you talking uh, to a tree earlier. Um, 
are you are you a botanist that uses arcane energy to communicate with plants oh no it didn't talk back oh oh that's a shame i wonder why i don't think it could but i firmly believe and um so does winna that even if plants can't talk back to you um that you should still talk to them they like it hmm. yes i've read studies about people that play music for plants um there were bards that tried different instruments and like as he's talking about it he walks right into one of the plants uh does that count as a pat uh i think so <laughs> um so you walk right into one of the shrubs nearby oh my. um it's sort of a round uh green shrub lots of leaves um on top it's got um uh, what looks like almost like a little leaf crown um, that is like glistening. It's a little bit of a different color. Um, and you run uh, directly into the shrub uh, and you hear a squeak from inside. Oh. Hello? Uh, you say hello um, and some of the branches uh, part. A little bit the little branches of the shrub um and inside you can just see these two like very round like white glowing eyes um and uh as this happens um a couple of small branches kind of wind their way out um and they hand you uh another sort of small bag with something inside oh my uh, thank you you just hear another squeak and the leaves close. I turn around immediately, hoping that Soraya saw that. <laughs> Did Soraya see that? Um, Soraya has taken off her shoes and she is curtsying um, and bowing to one of the other plants with the crown nearby. Uh, you do so um and the two of you see the uh the plant kind of shake a little bit um and then it rises up and you see two kind of like little spindly legs at the bottom and it just kind of does a little tilt forward and then kind of settles back down oh she's gonna turn to willoughby and be like well it's not wearing shoes so i thought it was polite to take them off Oh, well, that makes perfect sense, but you must be so excited. It seems that this one not only talked back, but it actually interacted with you and, and it gave me the prize. What's in there? Oh, I didn't even check. Uh, he'll open the bag. Uh, the bag. What, okay. What is it? Uh, go ahead and roll me. How many of them are there? I have to do this on roll 20 because D5s aren't a thing. Uh, four D5s. Oh. oh boy. 45. Did you say 45? Stand around. How do I do that? The same way you would do anything else. I know, I just forgot. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We've got Eight. a one, a two, a one, and a four. Okay. So it's two ones. Um, so you look inside the bag. Um, and you see uh, what look like four um, tiny, like plush shapes. Um, you sort of tilt it so you can see a little with a little bit of light in the bag. Um, two of them are shaped um, like a small, uh, almost like a little rocky, like elemental creature, um, kind of made of a bunch of uh, rocks with a little bit of like, uh, yellow like magic swirling in between um one of them is uh shaped uh almost like a dancer um but sort of swirling around what would be limbs are these different like uh blue and orange uh, forms that look like ice and fire um and then one of them is shaped like a little ink blob um with a very mischievous smile on its face. Um, and you recognize little plushies of some of the Strixhaven mascots. Um, the two elemental ones are from the Lorehold College. 
Um, the Ice and Fire one is Prismari, um, and the Inkling is the Silver Quill Ink Blob. Oh, these are so exciting! I, um, what college are you? Witherbloom. Oh, oh no, I didn't get a Witherbloom one. Um, hmm, they're little plushes of the mascots. I, I can try to ask the plant if, if they have one for you, I feel bad. That's okay. Those are precious. Oh, okay. Um, which one would you like? Oh, I don't want to choose. We can let everybody else choose first. Okay, that that seems fair. We should wait for our, our friends. Um, I need a size comparison here. How big are they in comparison to Willoughby? Is he like at a county fair how, holding like? How they're tall about is to, Willoughby? They're comrades. Um, I don't know. Oh man, I'd like. To- I'd like to think he's like two and a half feet. He's okay. real tiny. They're about. Does that work mechanically in D and D? I'm I'm technically a small creature. Yeah, that, that's like gnome sized. Size. Okay. Yeah, um. Yeah. So yeah, that'll that'll. Right. They're like maybe like six or eight inches. They're they're little. Okay. Um. And go ahead and both of you roll me in our check. Uh, 13. <laughs> Saray, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> She's very overwhelmed, okay? Have you rolled above a three? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Saving um, them for the big stuff. Yeah, obviously. Well, will it be that? A uh, 13 is, is plenty. Um, these are... Cuddly Strixhaven mascots. Um, mm-hmm. These are pull one out of the bag to look at it, and uh, you get just sort of a faint. Um, uh, it, it feels faintly like there's a little bit of a magical aura coming off of these, um, and when it's like close to you, you immediately feel comforted, um, like any anything that was sort of stressing you out or like giving you a little anxiety or, or fear or anything like that is gone. Um, because these have magical properties. <laughs> um, I'll put this really? in. Give like, out comfort animals here. Yes. Magic. Uh, emotional magical. support. Help. Yes. Plushy. Emotional support yep. plushies. Yes. Uh, so it says representing one of the mascots of Strixhaven, the soft, tiny magic toy is perfect for cuddling. But if you press it to your arm, shoulder, or leg as an action, the toy stays attached for one hour or until you remove it. It can be used to fight off fear, and when you make a saving throw to avoid or end the frightened condition, you have advantage if the mascot's on your person. Oh my oh god! My god, that is so fucking wholesome. And you can use them that way once per long rest, um, and I'll put that in the Discord for you. I'm just imagining I'm every amazing. student during final exams has like has a little these. plushie. It's just like a plushie, like a fucking parrot on their shoulder. <laughs> can yeah. I can I sidebar about what my college did, like IRL, it, very briefly? Yes. Mm-hmm. They all gave us goldfish. I told this story the other day. They all gave us goldfish, like living fucking goldfish. Oh, I was about to say, put the them in the wrong or the living they creature. Okay. Put them in the wrong temperature. And when I tell you that campus wide goldfish were dying left and right, it was like the funniest, oh, no. scariest thing we ever went through as freshmen in my no. college. I was like, is this a oh, psychological no. tactic? Welcome to college. Like, holy death. shit. <laughs> so, yeah. Grapple with finals and experience. mortality. So, yeah, that was. Oh, oh my God. God. Just in case you the had any. The second time I've told left. this story, like this week. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, so this That's is much terrible. better. This is much yes. better. Yes. Yeah, so have, love this. Have a strict save and squishmallow. A squishmallow. Squishmallow. Um, yeah, so if you have it on your person once per long rest, you can use it to get uh, advantage on a saving throw against fear. Love it. All right. Uh, let's go to uh, Law and Giselle. Where are you headed? Hey. We are looking for a stage. Okay. Um, let's see. Where did you guys leave off? You were in the Hall of Oracles, yeah? Yes. 
Okay, so I don't think uh, I don't think you guys have to have to roll for this um, because behind the Hall of Oracles, um, as you sort of wander through it and towards the back of the biblioplex, um, you see an amphitheater. Um, sort of uh, leveled steps uh, going down um, and then ramps sort of uh, interspersed between them for full accessibility. Um, but you can see uh, down sort of in the pit um, an impressive, like lavish stage um, with these huge curtains that are sort of drawn back um, like a like it like it's revealing uh, opening night of a uh, of a major production. They have a nice stage. I've never the theater stuff was never really my sort of thing. What are we looking for here? It said a star is born, so I assume we have to go on the stage. You don't think that they're going to ask us to like do like a like a cold reading of something, right? That would be utterly ridiculous. And very painful. All right, let's try it out. If we must. Okay, um, the two of you make your way down into the amphitheater and up onto the stage. And you're on a stage. Can we go behind? You said the curtains are drawn? Uh, the curtains are drawn open. Oh, open. Hello? We are looking for our prizes. Maybe they're hidden somewhere. Everyone, everywhere else, they just hand us prizes. Maybe that's to throw us off. Maybe this is extra special prize. You don't think we need to come back at night, right? Because the clue said something about the opening night. They said we have to finish by the end of the day. Wouldn't the night be the end of the day? This is true. Maybe it's about making it feel like nighttime. Maybe we have to turn the lights off. Okay. Looks so, up. <laughs> like, turn like a catwalk situation. <laughs> is there like... A a light a light array above us uh there is a light array um the none of the lights on the grid are currently on though maybe we have to turn, them on. turn the lights on i'll do it mm. okay i want to start finding things to push buttons to push <laughs> levers to okay turn. roll an investigation check <laughs> okay I'm gonna roll a different die. Oh my god. There's no I'm I'm not gonna be able to salvage that. So two plus five is a seven. Val, uh, let me roll for <laughs> you. Please. I just gotta push through it. I'll get through on the other side. I get through the slump. Uh, you you look around a little bit. Um, you kind of peek backstage and everything. Um, you do not see a light board anywhere in your vicinity. Do I have light as the spell? Let me see. I don't think I do. This is a bust. I'm bored. <sighs> but I want the things. They give really good prices. Oh, oh, I've got it. I've got it. Um, she'll look up and point your finger and she'll cast dancing lights okay uh what are the what are the components of dancing lights does it have a verbal component dancing lights it does it is still a cantrip but it has verbal somatic and material a little bit of phosphorus or witch word or a glow worm i like to think she keeps a little glow worm in her purse so she'll dig her into the haversack find her purse dig into the purse where's 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 where <gasps> oh glowy uh and then she'll she'll cast it okay um you reach up and cast 
dancing lights. Um, and as you speak the uh, spell, um, you hear uh, the loud um, clicking of the uh, stage lights turning on um, and they and sort of turn on um, and then I'll go off except for a spotlight um, that is down just on Giselle very briefly. Um, and then it uh, turns off as four of the footlights on uh, around the front of the stage turn on. What did you do? I cast the lights and then the lights turn on. <gasps> oh, prizes, prizes. She'll rush forward toward the, the footlights to look for the prizes. Okay. Um, you uh, make your way to one of the footlights um, and you can see where a, a spot has sort of slid open for um, for the light to shine out. And sitting down inside um, is a very nice hooded lantern. Oh. It's about lights. They give us lights. I, I'm getting this. I'm getting this. Okay. Um, here, one for you. And you take one for the Gukumbaya. And I'll take mine. And then I take one for the beautiful mermaid. Okay. You're not going to start this like day one, are you? Start what? The flirting and everything, and it just gets out of hand. I very quickly. do not flirt. I make my very powerful presence known, and sometimes people just respond to this aggressively. Yes, they aggressively respond to this because I have a very powerful presence. I just I what? like. Do you give me the look? What? What? What is I, the look? I like the people here, and it, it, it tends to end poorly. When does it end poorly? When has it ended poorly? Who? So there was N Davian uh, two weeks ago. Davian did the... not end poorly. David, then Davian and I are still friends. Uh, and before that, it was Laurel. Uh, and... Laurel moved away that had nothing to do with me. Okay, but she moved away in a very conspicuous time. I, I, I... Okay, Laurel may have had more to do with Marius and Marius being a little bit overprotective, but that still had nothing to do with me. Can we just be chill for like a couple days at least? I am chill. When am I not chill? I am so chill. Okay. I'm, yes. I'm... Fine. You give your light to the beautiful mermaid, and I will give mine to the adorable little Kukavaya, okay? What? You want to take all three? And then I just hold mine. Fine. You give them to them. Fine. I stole the ego. Show up. <laughs> Like, uh, put down the, the third light next to you and just walk off the stage. Giselle walks off the stage, uh, Law leaving you with three lanterns. Um, and from off to one side of the stage, uh, you hear sort of a soft laugh. Who's there? Do you fight with all of your girlfriends like that? She's not my girlfriend. She's well. She she's a friend who's a. You turn and see a familiar face. Which familiar face? Not the one you want to see. Damn it. You see, um, standing there, watching you. Vaping, probably. Uh, long, blue hair, um, pale skin facial markings, um, pretty revealing outfit, sort of leaning against the edge of the stage. They. Hi, doll. Why are you here? I go to school here. No, you don't. Yes, I do. 
No, because if you go to school here, then that means we're going to school together again, and I don't... Why the long face? Do we have to do this today? I was having a good day. And seeing me does not make your day better. No, it makes it significantly worse. What have I ever done to you? <sighs> well, there was last month when you set off the uh, explosives in my family's mailbox, and before that where you took credit for the uh, the, the, the thing that I made for... I don't, I don't have to explain myself to you. I, I... Clearly you think you do. She's not my girlfriend. And goes walking away with holding three lanterns. Nomos! Black, where are you? I heard her say she likes mermaids. You know they to be a water genasi. No more. Just continuing to mutter to himself as he, or as they, uh, storm out away from Thay. You storm away from your childhood friend. <laughs> no. Friend of me. And go to find Giselle. And as you leave the amphitheater, both of you um, hear this like piercing clear high note and you look down um, and you see the lights once again uh, follow the sequence they did when you were standing on the stage and the spotlight lights up Law, you know, they um, I don't know if Giselle knows her I think I know of her so a familiar face at least long blue hair, hard to miss What is she doing here? I don't know. Apparently she goes to school here now, though. I swear she's following me. Oh. It's not funny. <laughs> it is very funny. It's not funny. <laughs> it really isn't funny. She is the only one I have ever seen get a rise out of you. This is going to be so amazing. <laughs> it's just always a competition with her, and I don't know why it has to be. She reminds me too you... much of my father, I think. She looked nothing like your father. It's not the peer. Um, not everything is about how people look. I, you think I'm not shallow? That it is just about appearance? We're not getting into this again. We have lanterns to deliver. Uh, and the four of you, um, I'll say, can meet back up right around the Hall of Oracles, uh, plushies and lanterns in tow. I thought you were saying it's the Hall of Oracles, plushies and lanterns. For a yes, second. the Hall of Oracles, <laughs> plushies Oracle, and lanterns. Plushies and lanterns. It I is. love this place. <laughs> it's great. Uh, yeah, so you meet back up uh, right around um, outside the room with the Snarl. We oh, have prizes. Friends. Your prizes? Hello. Yes, we do. Um, what what college are you in? I, I thought we we do not pick the colleges yet, no? Oh no, we we are we're supposed to pick them. Oh which one we want? Oh I yes. I think I, I don't know. I, I take some of the classes to see. Um Oh I thought okay. maybe Prismari, maybe the, uh, what is the other one? The ink something. Um, Nomos, what is it? The... I, I only... Pad? Yes, yes, that one, yes. She looks proud know. of herself for remembering something and paying attention long enough to answer a question. <laughs> <laughs> She's just like, okay. Well, I, I only ask because um, our prize was uh, these little plushies. And um, they, some of them are different. Well, they're all different mascots from the different colleges. And so oh, I wanted to give everyone. Um, oh, I want that one. The, the blue and the red. That, yeah, that's the, that's the Prismari. Yes, yes. yes. This is Prismari. Yeah. I, 
I and he like sort of does that thing where like he puts his hands behind his back and he like just plays with his one foot and like kicks like a rock or whatever. Just I thought I thought maybe you would like that one the most. So I do. Thank you. What are you having? Um. Well, I I would really like the Lorehold one. Um. But if somebody else uh, wants it, um, th there are two of those. So. I'd, I'd be happy to give one away. That is that is what you want, yes? Nomos, the, the, the lower hold. Uh, so, uh, mm, officially, yes, but do not tell anyone and just keep it quiet. I'm planning on enrolling in Quandrex. Just don't tell oh. my sister. Okay. No. Really? Just, just we'll talk about it later. Well, do you want the plushie? But if there isn't the Quantrix one, then I suppose I could take the other lower hold one just to make it seem official. Well, so I, I guess that leaves the... I'm sorry, what is the ink school? Because literally all I wrote was ink school. <laughs> Silver quill. Silver quill. Silver quill. Thank you. Well, I guess that leaves Silver quill. Is that okay, Soraya? Okay, here you go. What, um, what did you get for completing your challenge? Oh, here, I'll trade you. Uh, and <laughs> here's a, uh, here's a lantern for you and for you. And... Oh, I'm not allowed to give out the lanterns. Oh, why not? Did you get banned? Mm. No, she um... make joke. Uh... She's not very funny, though. I thought maybe you'd been arrested. That's equally likely, yes. Oh, it's okay. It happens to me sometimes, too. You've been arrested. Oh. Oh, what have you done to be arrested? Misunderstanding. I'm very interested. I don't know you guys that well yet, but... um, If well, I you don't you know well, uh... what I have done to be arrested, then you tell me what you be have, have to say done what you to have arrested. done to be arrested. Excuse oh. me, was I talking to you? Well, I lived on an island for a couple years, um, and every now and then I would accompany Willa. Um, she's the one who taught me magic. Um, she would let me go with her run errands. Um, and apparently in most civilized towns, um, they prefer you wear clothes. Oh my. <laughs> Willoughby is completely red. <laughs> you were arrested for indecent exposure. Yes. Twice. I thought maybe it was only that one town. I was wrong. Leans over to law. And you say I flirt. Do not take that as flirting. I do. I don't understand how your brain works. So, do we have any more of the puzzles to solve? Was that so, the alumni commission works when they retire, <laughs> seeking promising mages to inspire. What do we think that means? I, I, I think <laughs> we heard you. I think statues, maybe? Go look at those. Yes, statues sound good. We could go there. I'll let's go look at that, Willoughby, and give you a second to calm down. We split uh, again. But oh, I'll no, play. how did it happen? <laughs> and this time it's horny. <laughs> <laughs> I think I broke the little one. Oh, no. <laughs> It's okay. I think uh, this will be one of many times that happens. So Law and Willoughby, um, you make your way back into the middle of the Hall of Oracles, uh, where the statues are, uh, leaving Giselle and Soraya outside. Uh, and I think that's a good time for us to take a break um, before you get to solving your final 
scavenger hunt clue. Um, so thanks everybody for hanging out with us so far. I'm having a blast. I hope you are too. Um, thanks for the for the subs and the chat redemptions and all that great stuff. I've noted down our NPC name. I just gotta find out where to put them in. Um, so yeah, take uh, take a quick break. We'll be gone for five or ten minutes. Get some water stretch do all that good stuff uh and we will be back in a little while so stick around and we'll see you soon internet thanks for hanging out with us during our break uh we're back to continue our biblioplex scavenger hunt um so willoughby and law have headed back into the hall of oracles to look at the statues um, so we'll start there. Uh, I'm gonna have both of you make an investigation check. All right, I found my die. That's a natural. Is it work. worth it? Oh, good 25. shit. Uh, mine was a five, so. Okay. Will be you can only <laughs> you can only see like a little bit of the statues is the thing yeah. they're so tall. <laughs> so you read some of the plates. It's very interesting. Um, reading sort of the the names and the, the colleges and everything that the oracles were associated with and the years that they were oracle and looking sort of up at them, but nothing nothing that relates to the scavenger hunt. Um, and Law, you eagle-eyed sort of make your way around, you look behind the statues, you look at all the plates to see if any of them have anything interesting on them. Uh, you take a little bit, um, making your way sort of around the Hall of Oracles, checking every statue. Um, you don't find anything. Maybe, maybe we were wrong. Maybe this isn't the place. Hmm. Uh, I mean, perhaps the alumni have um, portraits somewhere. Uh, would I know anything? Like, you know how like halls are dedicated to people or named after people? Hmm? Is there like an alumni section? Uh, there is. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, there's not a section just for alumni. Um, there is, and Soraya had mentioned it earlier, uh, the student and alumni art yeah. gallery, um, which probably has some portraits and such in it. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, Soraya has been to it, an art gallery. That's right. Um, perhaps, perhaps they'll know where to find it. They, they said that they found it before and, and I'm hoping, um, I mean, maybe they saw something helpful. Okay. Maybe we go and ask them and see if they know anything about uh, what's going on. If there's a better place for us to look. I was just very certain that there was the statues, and I'm a little bit angry that it wasn't. Well, I, you weren't far off. It is, it is If it is, in fact, an art gallery, statues are sculptures. Sculptures are art. So... You were on the right track. I just wanted to solve one of the puzzles myself, but that's fine. Well, you solved the, the light thing. No, that was Giselle and solved that one. Oh, well, there will be plenty of time. We, we've we got a, a, a long uh, college career ahead of us, and there will be plenty of time to show your stuff. I appreciate the optimism. I, I really do. It, it, Giselle it's, it tends to just yell at me until I... You're all right, Willoughby. <laughs> oh, thanks. All right, let's go back and tell the others. Okay. The uh, two of you make your way back out. Uh, where you can find, I assume, Giselle and Soraya. As they walk up, you hear Soraya, like the end of the story, she's telling Giselle, well, it was a really hot day and there was a very, very pretty fountain with the sparkliest water in the middle of the town square. And the last time 
I had gotten into a fountain with my clothes on. Willow was very upset about it. She said that that's just Aww. not what you do with your clothing. And I, you know, I just thought that I was doing the right thing. And then the guards came up and they told me I was not. Well, have you seen the fountains here? No, I have not. There was nothing at the statues. Oh. Uh, no, but, um, Soraya, you had mentioned an art gallery. Um, perhaps that's where we need to be? I don't remember where it was. Let's ask someone. Just, just go, like, look around for, like, literally anybody besides <laughs> the three of them. Okay. Does not matter if they look like they know what they're doing or if they look as lost as she is. Just first person. Yeah, um, there's there's a lot of folks around here. Um, I'll tell you what, let's do... How many of them are there? Do you want us to roll a dice uh, for your just NPC go ahead table? And roll a d12. Four. Four. One, two. Okay. Um, yes, you uh, you turn, um, and the first person you see um, is another Owlin. Um, she is taller than than Willoughby, much taller. Um, probably standing about five feet or so. Um, a little bit older. Um, with like sort of graying feathers, um, big round glasses, um, and wearing one of these sort of gray uh, Strixhaven robes uh, with a big silver star on it. Hi. Oh, well, hello, dear. Um, do you know where the? Oh, what were we looking for again? The art oh, gallery. The art, the art gallery. Where is that? Oh. The art gallery wonderful a wonderful place to visit are you all new yes well perfect you are going to meet me later anyway uh, i'm professor sharpbeak i'll be your guidance counselor oh nice where are you to. going to guide us to uh, well for now the art gallery i suppose <sighs> perfect <laughs> that's what we need all right, then follow me this way. It's a wonderful place, really. Uh, we showcase the art of both students and alumni there. It's really sort of a happening place to be if you like, well, all sorts of media, really. How do you get in the gallery? Well, you walk this way, come with me. Uh, and she leads you off to uh, one side. So you go, um, west again, sort of past the stacks um, through where the book gardens were. I um, mean, in that back corner, um, there's an archway that leads you into an art gallery. Um, there's all sorts of things in here. There's, I mean, your more traditional art. There's paintings and things hanging on the walls. Um, there's also, uh, as Professor Sharpbeak will tell you this, all sorts of things are displayed here, really, both magical and mundane art made by our alumni and our students, of course magical artwork oh uh, yes of course uh, we had a wonderful installation of uh, moving paintings for a while um enchanted you see with the enchantment right down to the ink and the paint in the canvas very lovely that sounds very interesting oh it is is there something specific you're looking for uh... um well, we're we're doing the first year scavenger hunt, and um, oh yes, of course. Yeah, we're we're hoping that we can find um, the the answer to this second question there. Well, something something inspiring. Inspiring. Well, I tend to find many forms of art inspiring. I was a member of the Silver Quill College myself, and now I teach a few classes over there, so the writing really speaks to me. Calligraphy as well. Um, does that help? You've been very helpful. 
Wonderful. Well, I'll leave you to it. Don't want to be cheating now, asking a professor for help, but um, hopefully it can give you a little bit of a nudge. Oh, and I'd make sure that you keep an eye out for the scroll. You're all going to have to uh, make an appointment with me to talk about your schedules at some point. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank Goodbye. You. Bye. Yes. Goodbye now. Have fun. She kind of totters off. <laughs> I'm not good with schedules. That is what she's for. Yes? Oi. Yes, I think um, we'll we'll all probably take classes together. I would imagine, and uh, I don't know if we'll take every class together, but we can all help each other out and keep each other on task. That would be great. I'm always forgetting to do homework. That is very true. They forget everything. So we need to speak with Professor Sharkbait at some point. I I think it was Sharkbeak. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, Kukubai. Yes, yes. Um. Well. Sharkbait. If, Shark <laughs> um. <laughs> if. Well, what kind of art do you like? Um, Let me guess. You like bright, saturated colors. Yes? Who, me? Little one, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, uh, yes, I suppose. But honestly, I, I'm really more interested in, um, as the professor said, uh, the written word, um, like... Uh, poetry and folk tales and and um i don't know things like that where is writing over there i think i have an idea about this last one so when okay. we went on the stage uh we apparently had to perform something which i didn't understand Ooh. i just made lights but um i think the way that this is described we need to find something that is inspiring to us and then probably go mm, 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 in front of it and then we get price yes oh that what, makes sense do we need to paint something do we draw on the paintings that are on the wall do not draw on the paintings this is art but it would still be art no more do not draw on the paintings. Fine. Go find the art that you like. Go. Go, go. All of you go. Soraya has already wandered off. <laughs> Does anybody have an idea of what kind of art their character likes? Calligraphy. Calligraphy is good. Written, Something yeah. abstract. Just okay. lovely lines and curves and that sort of thing. Okay. The like repurposed art where somebody like makes uses a bunch of hubcaps to make a dragon <laughs> or something. Yes. <laughs> Except this dragon actually breathes fire. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, this one's an actual <laughs> dragon. <laughs> Made out of hubcaps. Oh no. <laughs> A trash dragon. <laughs> a tra <laughs> it's a trash dragon, you. It's a trash it's dragon, a trash Charlie. Dragon. Trash dragon. Baby CR16. dragon, you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Soraya likes all art. Okay. Cool. Soraya's having a blast. Yeah, she's just wandering around, reading things. Okay. I bet she at. also Ready? listens to everything. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> She'll hear bits and pieces. I like the idea that Soraya <laughs> okay. really hears every type of music and finds it pleasurable, whether or not she's listening. Something I was going to make a similar she gets the joke. Vibe. I like the idea that she listens to music and loves it, but anything that has words. Couldn't tell you. you will What's the song that goes them? like? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, what are some of the words? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, okay. Not really. So uh, the the four of you wander. 
um, Willoughby finds a, a very lovely uh, sort of piece of calligraphy um, that that has been done by a student artist here, um, which is a sort of the same phrase, I don't know, in like several different languages, um, done in sort of different writing styles, and, and it's lovely. And he would, like he would even like take out his calligrapher's tools, which he is proficient in and oh, like lovely. try to like figure it out and like practice in front of it oh that's <laughs> kind of like plops down on the ground in front of it cross-legged and just <laughs> uh you um yeah you you sit down in front of it um, and you start doing a little bit of uh calligraphy of your own um and as you're sitting there right let me find him <laughs> I got too many things, guys. I got too many things. Here we go. So many things. Uh, so many. This person walks up next to you. Oh it's, no, it's he's hot. One. <laughs> this is the one I was talking about <laughs> in Discord. <laughs> uh, he is an elf, um, standing uh, probably like five, eight, five, nine. Um, and kind of, you hear boots kind of clacking on the floor as he uh, steps up next to you. Um, he's wearing a nice uh, green doublet. He's got blonde hair, so shaved on the side, long, long pointed ears. Um, and uh, you hear him like take a breath, like he's gonna say something and then he doesn't. Uh, and then finally he kind of like kneels down next to you cause you're so small when you're sitting. And just says, uh, uh, what are you working on? Oh, um, I, I was just practicing my calligraphy. I, I was really inspired by this piece and, and, well, I, I guess I just, I don't know. The, the technique is really interesting and, um, and I wanted to give it, give it a shot. <laughs> it's a little embarrassing. <laughs> I don't think it's embarrassing at all. So much of the best way is to, practice and learn from others, right? Yes, yes, exactly. Hi, uh, Kadoris is my name. Oh, I'm so sorry, where are my manners? Willoughby Wonderfoot, first year. Oh, uh, Willoughby Wonderfoot, it is lovely to meet you. Um, I, well, you're obviously a calligrapher of sorts. Are you an artist interested in the fine arts? Um, I, I definitely uh, am interested in the uh like folk stories and and like written art and um and fiction non-fiction all of that sort of thing so yes uh, a bit well if you like art and you like stories mm -hmm. we have a couple of clubs here at strixhaven that might be perfect for someone such as yourself if you're interested oh um yes i i would love to hear about it all right. Uh, and he pulls out uh, two flyers from a sort of like roll that he's got stuck in his pocket and hands them to you. Uh, and one of those is for the uh, Distinguished Society of Fine Artists. Um, I myself am a member um, of a first year as well, like you. Uh, just mm -hmm. just recently joined. I did some work for them over the, uh, the summer before the semester started. Um, we spend a lot of time here um, studying different sorts of art styles, sort of trying our hand at all kinds of different things. Um, and then the other is for the uh, Live Action Role Players Guild, which I'm also a member of. Um, so if you're interested in stories, it's sort of one of the best kinds of storytelling you can get. We do a lot of things out on the lawn. Willoughby is fucking sold on the LARPers Guild. 100 percent he eyes light up he could not be more excited about any if you think he's been excited about any of this doesn't compare to this he's oh, i the live action role playing oh that sounds exciting that sounds so oh the inspiration to be like many of the folk heroes and and Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a bit embarrassed about. Don't be embarrassed. Excellent. There's no sense in being embarrassed about something or excited about. We should love the things we love. Oh, yes, of course. I only hope to be 
even a fraction of as magnificent as some of the best heroes of of uh, of of legend. Um, what do? How do I? How do I join? Well, um, I can't officially make you a member. Um, you're going to want to talk to Rosie. Um, she's actually over in Stacks right now. They're putting together some costumes, so we're going to be uh, putting on a little bit of a show later um we like to uh, you know tell stories and and uh, things like that they're putting together a rather interesting basilisk costume at the moment uh using found materials obviously so um if you want to join and help that right down there oh absolutely i mean i i can't right now i have a quest with my friends um we're doing the scavenger hunt but after that i would love to yeah excellent well um i'll look for you later then okay um thank you kadoris uh, nice to meet you yes wonderful to meet you will it be wonderful <laughs> sort of stands and suavely walks away Chad has pointed out, I don't know if this guy's a serial killer or the best character ever, but it's... He's Kadoris <laughs> Domelawar. Dom, Domelawar. Because uh, I will point out, it does say in the fun facts about him, he eats an entire jar of pickles. He has weird eating habits. And then drinks the vinegar. He likes pickles. Okay, listen. So this whole I time, he like leaned in on this conversation and you just went, pickled onions. Don't shame people that drink pickle juice out of the jar. I do it. <laughs> Me too. 100%. <laughs> I love sour things and vinegar to I the point. Or are you amazing like Kadoris? When Mellowar. when I get high, I will literally take a fork and eat Kalmata olives out of the jar. That is <laughs> my munchies. I like, do that those sober. Are, oh, my, I was about to say, my mom just does that. <laughs> so. I'm only half Greek, y'all. I didn't get the olive gene, sorry. <laughs> oh. I anyway, he likes wait. pickles. I also can't wait for the arc where Willoughby learns that he only plays like he only enjoys playing like chaotic evil characters. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> He's always the villain. He's always the I villain. power trip. <laughs> oh, <good>. Professor Chaos. <gasps> <laughs> yes. Please, please do Amazing. that. Now, chat says you're quiet again. You need to get turned so we can all hear you. How? <sighs> I'm just going to yell into my mic. You're Kaladeshi. Our speaking voice is yelling. <laughs> <laughs> Chat says they will never Channel trust Kadoris. And honestly, you cannot trust a man with cheekbones that high. Mm, you can. <laughs> anyway, this is the NPC when I went in the Discord earlier. And I was like, man, there's some fucking attractive characters in here. <laughs> this guy's hot. Okay, we're done with Kadoris. He goes away. He disappears. He'll be in my dreams tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so you have your flyers and you do some great calligraphy and nothing happens, but you have a great time and you make a new friend. <laughs> I'm just having a great time. I think at some point the cal calligraphy stops and doodles begin oh, of like little yeah. like Willoughby and Kadoras like with swords and like fighting a basilisk. Oh my God. I love them. I was trying to find the name of the game they were setting up for, but I cannot find it. It's very funny. The I'll arc where Willoughby dies is going to be heartbreaking. Stop! <laughs> Stop it! No! no! What? Beholders and Behears kidding. is the game that they play. Beholders and be what? Behears. Oh my... My god, that's amazing. I'm dropping more NPCs today than I meant to. I know I promised you guys I wouldn't overwhelm you with them, but some of them are fun. They're not overwhelming. Okay. They are not. I feel like they're yeah. distinct enough. You have not yeah. pulled a team apple right yet. You I'm should. sufficiently <laughs> whelmed. Excellent. <laughs> I'm just the right uh, amount of whelmed. Just the right amount of whelmed. <laughs> Giselle. Whelmed. Let's go to Giselle. Uh, you uh, find a particularly interesting sculpture. Um, it is hard to tell what it's made of. Um, it's pretty abstract, um, but it looks like uh, from the bottom and sort of spiraling up in these different pieces and all of these different, um, it almost looks like glass um, in all of these different colors um, sitting in front of a window so the, the light will hit it um, are all of these fractals um, that have been sort of sculpted into this like abstract, very colorful sculpture. 
um, the name of the student who sculpted it is Cadoris Donnellawler. You don't know who that is. No idea. But he makes fractal sculptures too. I'll endear you guys to Cadoris, don't worry. Um, it's She'll like lean in, like kind of like inspect it from all sides, like try to get like the light off of it just right from the window. Gorgeous. Hmm. Only like briefly thinks about what it would take to steal it. Like, you know, she's like getting into like, you know, she 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 takes something out of her bag and it's like, okay, it's about this big three or four strong arms to remove it under the night under the cover of night to get through a certain security system. It is beautiful though. Hmm. Spend a while admiring it. Nothing happens, but it's joyful time. It's quite lovely. I feel inspired. Well, it sparkles a little bit. <sighs> Shit. Law. <laughs> you find yes. uh, a particularly interesting garbage art piece. Um, it's just what I like to call them, and I can call them that because I used to make them <laughs> um, for school and stuff. Um, but it's a uh, a large canvas um, that has sort of on the bottom uh, or on the bottom layer um, like a bunch of like splatter paint uh, that has been done, and then on top of the, sla the splatter paint are attached all of these like found objects um, in the same color as whatever that paint is. So it kind of makes this like uh, moving. Uh, like rainbow piece, almost. Um, lots of all, all kinds of found objects and junk and stuff in there. It's very interesting to look at. Law well, wants to touch it. Okay. I'm sorry, that's just my instinct. It's like... Wants to... Yeah. Okay, you reach out and you touch it. Yeah. And someone next to you goes, I, I wouldn't well, do that. I, I not, is this not an interactive sort of thing? No, you're not really supposed to touch them. Oh. I understand the instinct, so it's quite comfortable. It's Kadoris again. <laughs> I was going to ask, is this Kadoris again? It is now. He's still here. He was leaving after talking to Willoughby and he saw you and was like, oh, ah, oh mm, I, I wouldn't do that. But are there art, is there art we can touch and like do things? Uh, well, if you're interested in the art of storytelling, I'm a member of the live action role playing guild. And now those kind of stories mm. are really ones you can dig your claws into, if you know what I mean. I don't really like public speaking all that much. Well, that's fair. I mean, we have a lot of parts that don't speak necessarily um and it's really a lot of things happening at once no one's really put on the spot unless they want to be do you make any like equipment or anything no oh, yes we make all of our own costumes and props and things found objects mostly i don't really know about the role-playing part but if you need anyone to help make equipment that that sounds fun that would actually be wonderful we're always short of prop masters <laughs> Everyone wants to be in the spotlight, you know? Yeah, but the, the, yeah, um, I guess, what was your name again? Kadoris. Right. I don't know, do we have, I don't, in Kaladesh we have fantasy cell phones, but I don't know if I have service here, uh, or not, or if that's a thing you have on your plane. Uh, no, I don't no. know what that's fine. that is. Uh, I, I'll find you, I guess. Oh yeah, take a flyer. Oh, thank you. Hands you one. He's got his face down in one corner as, like, recruitment. Are you, like, the head of this club? Uh, no, I'm just recruiting. Um, you're gonna want to talk to Rosie. 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 Yes. Right. Very small. Firebrand. Can't miss her. You'll hear her a mile away. Well, thank you, and I try not to touch any more of the art. Excellent idea. All right, see you later. <laughs> and he leaves. For real this time. Okay. 
I'm starting to think he is the riddle. Yeah, I'm starting <laughs> to wonder. If Motherfuckers he's everywhere. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Can I ritually cast identify on the artwork? You can stand there. How long does that take? It's, I think it's 10 minutes for ritual casting. Okay. Yeah, maybe 11 minutes. Okay. You stand there for 11 minutes, and we'll go to what Soraya is doing, and okay. then we'll come back to you. Uh, Soraya, you uh, have wandered around, um, looked at a lot of the artwork, um, particularly entranced probably by some landscape paintings. Um, they're very uh, lovely, sort of different um biomes there's like a set of of them and you sort of walk around looking uh when another painting sort of next to it catches your eye um there is a large painting oh yeah that happens okay i have been while i'm wandering around (laughs) i have gotten out my little plushy friend um who i've named monster um (laughs) And I'm holding this little thing and I'm talking to it while I explain what is in the paintings to Aww. him. <laughs> okay. So she looks extra weird right now to everybody watching. You have a little ink blot, right? Yep. Oh gosh. I got to find the picture of the ink blot it's for so you guys. Cute. <laughs> They're so cute. It's just a little ink monster. I'll find him. That's why um, I named him Monster. He's adorable. Anyway, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, so Monster is wandering around with me. Yeah. So you're wandering around, a little plushy in your hand, kind of talking about the different paintings. Um, and uh, next to these landscapes, um, there is another painting um, that sort of catches your eye. It's very colorful. Um, and some of it even kind of like sparkles, even though it's a, it's a painting. Um, and it is the forms of uh, several people, um, older than you all, probably professors or, or alumni or something, all wearing um, their different college robes. Um, but featured prominently in the front are um, a few that are wearing the Prismari colors. Um, and there's a plaque at the bottom um, that sort of names all of the uh, the people in it. And you can sort of suss out that they are alumni. Um, and it says, at Strixhaven, we were inspired. To Monster. <laughs> oh, that says inspired. You say this. Uh, and you look down right below the plaque um, and a, a stone slides to the side and there's a small lever beneath it. In her head, she's like, well, usually in museums, you're not supposed to touch things, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Pull the lever. <laughs> Looking around, waiting for somebody to yell at her. <laughs> uh, no one yells at you. Um, oh, the lever You <laughs> you reach out and you pull this lever, um, and the plaque uh, pops open, and a box slides out, and uh, a pop the lid pops open in front of you. Just grabs it. Uh, you look inside, uh, and inside are four pennants with the Strixhaven star on them. look around for (laughs) her teammates they're all looking at different art pieces willoughby's having a grand old time you can tell who is just to me yelling the word inspire as loudly as she can in every Um, sentence she can think of every iteration of it it's probably (laughs) easiest to find giselle (laughs) i am so inspired this artwork really breathtaking inspiring monster and i found these what'd you find (gasps) oh where'd you find this that painting uh the plaque opened and this came out there are four of them i think they're for us well done mermaid nomos little one she did it. 
Monster helped. Two more minutes. It's just staring at the painting very intently. Stare at the painting. Uh, it's and... like... <laughs> Willoughby goes up to him, sees... sees that they're staring at the painting, looks at the painting, looks at them, starts looking at the painting, and then it's just the scene from them. Ferris Bueller's <laughs> Day Off. <laughs> Where, them. like, the two of us are just staring, just staring at it. Uh, yeah, so you cast Identify. Is Identify, a, like, a radius? I can't remember. Uh, fuck if I know. You asked me I to think know it's just one item. Your spell. Yeah. You had it's ten item. minutes. Okay. Eleven minutes. You choose one object that you must touch throughout the casting of the spell, which <laughs> law is touching the painting. <laughs> 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 After explicitly being told not to. Got really focused and forgot about that. Do you touch you've been touching the painting and you just like the corner identify. Of it, um there's the faint aura of illusion magic. Yeah. There's an, an illusion on the painting. What are we doing with this again? <laughs> oh, um I think we're supposed to um, I don't know. It's something related to to commissions and inspiration, and so I think, I think if there's an illusion on it, that means there must be something behind it. Maybe if you take it off the wall, maybe you'll see. All right, I'll try taking it down and see if there's anything behind it. <laughs> Just steps back to watch the chaos. Um, <laughs> are we not gonna tell them that? Shh, 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 shh. Oh. And start trying to take the painting off the wall. It does not budge. But it must be bolted. Hold on. Reaches into their kit and to get out their uh, their tinkerer's tools. Uh, uh, you reach into your kit and pull out your tinkerer's tools. And as you do, the four of you, because I'm not going to let you do this. <laughs> We can't do crime on our first night. Uh, not <laughs> what kind you of game can't queer in the title, so we can be gay, but we can't do crime. You are not about to destroy what a piece this? of art that a student made. Let's go destroy it. Bet. I was just gonna take it apart. You want to bank that on a I dice roll? I remember how it goes back together. I did this. You want to bank that on a dice roll? Oh, no, Where did this no, screw no. come from? <laughs> you want to roll for roll? you? You made a roll for you. No, we're not stealing the painting. You hear a commotion <laughs> coming from outside of the gallery. Um, you hear a lot of shuffling around um, and some raised voices. And then you hear coming from the stacks outside of the gallery, a scream. We find some exciting music. I just realized my eyebrow raises have no effect in this cosplay. <laughs> no, you could be doing anything. I can't there. look. Your surprised. horn. One of your horns raises up slightly. <laughs> no the hesitation. Soraya just bolts for the screaming. What? What? Why are we screaming? I think Law continues to try to do this until somebody pulls them away, given the emergency. Okay. I don't even think I think realizes one, what's going on. Once there's a scream, uh, Willoughby takes the the shield off of the side of his pack and holds it in front of him, back to Law as if to guard them from oh. whatever made that scream or whatever caused the scream. Just <gasps> my protector. A sweet bean. Um, Sarai, you bolt um, and you run out of the art gallery um, and you can see the, uh, the the stacks, the library shelves uh, from where you are there. Not there, probably, I don't know, 10 to 50 feet from you or so. They're right there. Um, and you see uh, a young elf um, sort of long brown hair uh, freckles across her face, but her face like red um, and her eyes just wide, um, terrified. And everybody has sort of like scattered as she's screamed and you're running straight towards her. So she just locks on to you um, and says, you gotta help me, that trunk has teeth.
Oh, that's it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, are you okay? No, it tried to bite me. Oh, have you never been bitten before? Not by a trunk. Oh. Okay. Well, I'll help you. And as you but say this, we're gonna this... have to talk about your surprise about being bitten by a trunk. As you say this, um, she just sort of looks very confused and also still terrified. Um, and you hear this terrible growling sound as from around the side of the sacks coming towards you is this large, like a steamer trunk, like you would keep costumes in or maybe clothes or something like that. And it is hopping, sort of scooting along the floor and it opens wide and has this huge toothy maw um, and this long like purple tongue and it is moving slowly but it is moving toward the two of you <laughs> she like gonna... everyone to roll initiative <laughs> Woohoo! can i play the uh the trunk <laughs> can I have my cosplay get guest starring val as the mimic just, trunk like prop up right here Woo! Just... okay that's a 19. Pull up the sheet. 15. Uh, Z, I also heard truck for a while. And I was like, oh, there are cars. <laughs> that's true, too. Yeah, that's why I had it come around the corner. I was like, mm. all right, let me write the animal knife stuff. All right, uh, Giselle, what you got? Uh, it's a 19 plus one is a 20. 20 Willoughby, what you got? A uh, 15. 15 Law, what you got? 17. 17 Sarai, what you got? 15. 15. Uh, let's, whose dex is higher? I am plus two. Uh, zero. Okay. You're all for the trunk. It's pretty bad. That's 13. Uh, so, Giselle, you're up first. Um, and you all can have heard <laughs> this exchange. Um, this poor young elf is very loud. So, Giselle, you once, once we hear the yelling and something about a trunk, she probably doesn't even hear the thing about the biting. She just hears a trunk and she's like, ooh. Is that where more prices are? Um, and she'll go a little closer. Um, but not too much closer. Um, within 30 feet, I think, I would be sufficient. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, you can make it there. Um, you sort of come out of the uh, the art gallery and you move up towards where Soraya and this elf are. Um, and you what? see this terrible fanged trunk making its way towards you. Oh, no, no, no. Um, she'll reach down into her haversack, into her purse, pull out this little charred twig. Hmm. Mm -mm. And, uh, she'll cast Witch Bolt. Okay. Go ahead and roll. Yeah. Range spell attack. Plus five. Okay. I'm sorry, is this song no. called Suspense Pirate? Yes. I love it. Well, it's not really great. That's a 10, but it's a 10 plus 5, so it's a 15. That will hit. Yeah. Um, so that's a D12-er. Dang. Did I not grab a D12? That's a big boy. Which bolt is the sorcerer's eldritch blast? Um, so, boom. Which bolt? This bolt. <laughs> Which bolt? <laughs> That one coming right at your face. Oh, that's an eight. So eight points of lightning damage. Okay. Um, Soraya, a bolt of lightning sort of blows past you um, and impacts this trunk sort of center mass. Um, and it makes this horrible sort of screeching sound and its tongue starts to flop around everywhere. No, 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 no. 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 Not her turn. Okay. Law. You're uh, still in the gallery with Willoughby. Yeah. 
I think. Can we see? Is it, wait, this isn't in the gallery. This is outside the gallery. Yeah, this is near the stacks, which is it's right around the corner. You have sort of heard the commotion, the commotion. and everything. Yeah. I think after hearing the the lightning blast or whatever, yeah. maybe it's shaken from their focus. Turns around to Willoughby. Where did that go? Um, it sounded like it came from out in the in that. Uh oh, God, I'm losing like lobby is the wrong word but like i it came from like over here right like kind of in the middle of everything it's like uh oh, let me get on the right page y'all yeah, sort of like right around here where the stacks are okay and the gallery is this corner this? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, okay yeah see so you right there that sounds like it came from right outside uh, we should probably go help yeah yeah probably we'll get back to the whatever i was yes and uh goes jogging outside to see the the not truck trunk trunk uh, <laughs> being attacked. In the main yeah so you just go it's just right around the corner sort of out in the main library area um do you see the scene before you uh, uh and for chat i'm not putting up the map because we don't really have it's just the same map as before we don't actually have anything like yeah i don't have right a battle now. map it's it's just the we were just pointing there's just the like thing. The art gallery in the corner, and then out Just for the door, reference. Yeah, there's the I'll, stacks uh, and everything. We're we're fighting right here, right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow! Uh, cool. Uh, so yeah, I think Law kind of like skids to a stop out the door and sees that. Uh, is there any like, are there any like vases or anything out here? Um. I'm looking for objects to be hurled. Sure. There's some like potted plants, maybe. Okay. Like potted plant works. Uh, Law <laughs> reaches into their bag and picks out like a small, looks like almost like a plate with like a spring underneath of it, mm -hmm. and like chucks it at the uh, chucks it at the, the the base of this plant, and it kind of like almost like magnetically like kind of shoots around as it like the the aether currents activate around it and it gets underneath the the pot and then shoots the pot as uh law casts uh catapult um okay sort of springs up underneath and uh and hurls the the potted plant at the hell yeah truck. uh and i think it makes a dexterity saving throw okay. not the pot the 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 trunk <laughs> The trunk. The pot fails. Uh, <laughs> the pot could also be a mimic. We don't know. Anything's possible. <gasps> no. What uh, else was a mimic? The, the, the elf. The, elf the friends we made along the way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's a 16. Oh, I think that probably succeeds. Okay, it succeeds, so it takes... Uh, let's see. Actually, I don't think it takes any damage. Uh, on a failed save... Yeah, I don't think it takes any damage from from a six, on a successful save. Okay, you so catapult this uh, potted plant, um, but it, it flies gold falls out. <laughs> too far just as the, uh, the maw closes once, I and mean, it flies over the trunk and sort of crashes into one of the bookshelves. Damn it! Make the make calibrate. Brings out another one and starts like tinkering with it, uh, like to readjust the springs and muttering to themselves. Okay. Uh, Soraya. Um, are Law or Willow be near me? Uh, Enough think... to hand them something. I think so. I think at least Law is right there. <laughs> <laughs> so she'll see what Law just did, and she's still got like the box in her hands from like with the like pendants, uh -huh. and she's just gonna hand it to them. Be like, here, hold that. Uh, like half uh, half minded like <laughs> takes. He's like, yeah, I, maybe I could use this <laughs> and sticks it. <laughs> and then she's gonna cast thunder wave at the <laughs> <thing. laughs> Oh, okay. Destroy the building. <laughs> nah, it's a big building. Uh, uh, it, it was an eleven. 
All right. Does it make a save? Uh, yes, it needs to make a constitution save, I believe. Hold on, I have to pull it up again. Uh, constitution saving throw on a failed save, the creature takes 2d8 thunder damage and is pushed 10 feet away from you. On a successful save, the creature takes half as much damage and isn't pushed. Okay, it rolls an 11. And your DC is what, 12? 12. Okay, so it fails. Um, so it's going to take the 11 thunder damage, which is mm. a lot. <laughs> Uh, there is this huge crack of thunder that Soraya just sort of lets loose um, in front of her, and the uh, the trunk sort of goes tumbling back, kind of end over end, before it uh, rights itself and it is pushed uh, ten feet away from you. <laughs> then she's gonna grab the box back. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Oh, <laughs> uh, Willoughby. Uh, sorry, I'm just desperately reading for... Oh, you're good. Oh, no, if it has the finesse property, if you throw it. Okay. Um, Willoughby's gonna scurry out of the gallery uh, and see the mimic. Um, do you think I'd be able to get far enough to get within melee range with like 30 feet of little little tiny movement. Uh yeah, you guys aren't that far away. So Okay. Yeah, you can stay yeah. up to it. So he'll he'll scurry out, see the mimic and uh unsheath his sword and go Get back, malevolent mimic! And uh he'll he'll go in uh charging. Ha! And uh let's see. Does a nineteen? It does. More than a nineteen. It definitely does. Okay. 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 Uh. Let's see. Oh, brother. Um. Okay. That is a. Oh God! I keep losing my sheet. Oh, here it is. Uh, three damage. Okay. I tried really hard. I rolled a one on my D8. What kind of damage is that? Uh, it's going to be, I believe it's slashing. Okay. All righty. Uh, yeah. So, Willoughby, um, you run past with your sword held high um, and bring it down on top of the trunk. And when you go to pull it back, you are stuck. <laughs> uh oh. I believe I've miscalculated. And as you and your sword and your sword arm are adhered to the top of the trunk. Oh no. Uh, anything else? Uh, no. I will just raise my shield valiantly. Raise your shield with your free, unadhered arm. Uh, and it is the trunk's turn. Um, and it, oh, no. since it has you grappled uh is going to try to let's see uh it's gonna try to bite you <laughs> with no. its big teeth no um and because it has you grappled it has grappler so it has advantage i'm so sorry <laughs> try is that a crit did you just crit I, i've done a natural 20 <gasps> no this is where will oh. dies <laughs> No! no! Will we, how many hit points do you have? Um, 12. Okay. <laughs> you don't die. <sighs> well, hold on. You tough? don't die. It has to be twice your max, right? You're, you take 16 points of damage. <gasps> Holy shit. Uh, piercing so and oh. acid. And it uh the top of the trunk sort of raises up and the purple tongue wraps around willoughby yanks him in <gasps> and slams bored. shut i'm sorry well, thanks for having me on game nights <laughs> no it's a no pleasure. we will save uh, I, told you I, was gonna, I told you i was gonna bully you <laughs> I there is a druid here. We will be fine. Okay. We will. We all have healing potions. We have potions. 
We I will think save two of the us baby can cast boy. Healing spells too, I'll right? see you every I have other a Saturday. Spell. <laughs> no, uh, and I have a healing cantrip. Second edition. No, <laughs> we will save our sweet baby boy. This, this Everything's fine gonna, <laughs> until it's not. I'm gonna post a screenshot because I feel bad. I'm telling the truth. I'm not being a bully. Oh no, I believe you. <laughs> and this I have is no like, reason not to believe you. See, this is when we all realize that we're about to multi-class barbarian and we all go into a frenzied rage and yeah. yeah. When I say I thought I was over preparing with two healing spells, I'm glad I did. There you go. Glad I did. I'm just saying that. One cantrip, one spell. I was like, this is a waste probably, but meh. It actually rolled pretty bad on the damage because all of those are Golly. D8s. Yeah, you, you could have died yeah, so Yeah, you could have died. Straight up died. Sorry. I would have been so upset. Giselle. Can you imagine if someone died first day of school? Guys, you're at magic school. It would have been fine. <laughs> it's Don't true. worry about it. We would have taken you to the infirmary and they would have Don't worry about restored it. Madam Pomfrey will be there. It's fine. Yes. <laughs> um... Giselle. Okay. Um, well, while Wait, maintaining hold on. concentration. Wait, time out real quick. Okay. I'm making sure it only gets one attack. Giselle, it's your turn. <laughs> it only gets one attack. I mean, I was just kind of laughing like, ha ha, Mimic, it's cla- No, this Mimic came to fucking play. Oh my God. Okay. Um, concentrating, continuing to concentrate on Witch Bolt, that's the nice thing, is that if you maintain concentration, the next one, the next round, just automatically hits and you just do more damage. So, I'm gonna do that. And that's 11 points of lightning damage. Okay. Does it have to make a save? It does not. It just does it, right? Okay. Yeah, because this is, it, uh, you make an attack roll with the first one. If the first one hits, then just every succeeding and round, you concentrate you on concentration. concentration. Yeah. You, right, okay. And it's 11? 11. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> Stick it with. Um, so Giselle uh, lets out another blast of lightning um, and the trunk in front of you um, sort of opens its mouth and lets out this horrible uh, screech again and then falls sort of singed uh, and busted up by a big thunderbolt, uh, a big thunder blast and all singed from lightning um, and falls Legal. Where's the, the the little potions? Um, get, get, get the little baby out. Ah, uh, oof. Ah, uh, is very not okay with like touching this thing, but we'll try to. Oh, she's uh, Sor Soraya's already like opening it. Like, okay. so she will will get out. Is okay. Acid resistant. Okay. <laughs> uh, Soraya, you um go to open the trunk. Not worried about it. Um, but you touch it. It's not sticky anymore. And you open it, and it just looks like a regular trunk with a roll busted up little Wilfy inside, unconscious. I'm not gonna have you make a death save. He's all uh, tuckered out. Because yeah. chat has just redeemed a uh, healing for you, and I, am, I imagine, I haven't looked, but I imagine it's probably for Willoughby. <laughs> um, now, do you so. have stream elements up? <laughs> uh, I can. I, uh, I think it's a deep. Z, how much is the healing? Is it a D10? <laughs> I can't remember. Thank you, Z. I think Thank it's you, a D10. Z. I'm gonna start getting a complex if I, like, I could like, run into battle, like Devil May Care, and just get healed by chat. I have to the dying. I will say Law. Work. Oh, I have that too! Everything's fine. Everything's Law is fine. in the back <laughs> and has just finished, like, there's a click and says, Oh, I got this time. Willoughby, will you hold this? Will Where does it go? He's dead. No, he's not. He's dead. Look he's... at him. He's all crushed in his little feathers. Oh. oh. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so the, the healing from chat technically is only for conscious characters. Um, I don't really care I can, at this low level that much. I can but just I cast figured healing word. You guys were going to do something anyway. Yeah. So. yeah. We got potions. Two of us can cast healing. I spells. cast healing word. Okay. Uh, let's he go ahead heals and five. Healing. So heal five. Uh, and then you have a D10 from the chat as well, Rob. Oh, sweet. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I'll just use the D10 now because it's very sweet. Be so dramatic, huh? Uh, four on the D10. 
Oh, well, I'm at nine. Thanks, so, Chad. Um, Soraya casts the spell. Um, and Willoughby, your eyes flutter open. Boy, you're going to be oh. sore tomorrow. Oh. Did we win? You yes. brought him back for, to life. That is very powerful magic. She's like patting Willoughby's wing like, are you okay? That looked like that hurt. It was immensely painful. I think I'm just a little sleepy, but I, I'll be okay. Do you, would you like to sit in my back? Um, that sounds like you'll be really nice. Yes, if you don't okay. mind. Okay. She takes out her designer bag. She's just not going to put him in the haversack because he'll suffocate to death. He'll um, suffocate to death. But she'll take out her her big designer Kaladeshi yes. bag and just like plunk him up and put him in it. Oh, like that really like a Joao. baby Bjorn. <laughs> yes, just in the purse. Um, you pick up Willoughby, um, pop him in the bag. Willoughby, you can see out. We have a nice little wool seat. Um, it's cozy Wee. and warm in there. Uh, and about this time, um, you hear, oh my. Goodness, oh my goodness. Uh, as Professor Sharpbeak um, Talon's kind of clicking on the floor, um, hurries over, kind of holding onto her robes. Oh my dears, are you all right? Yeah, yeah, Kukuvaya, he got hurt. He got oh. eaten, he died. I think it was his. <laughs> he was dead. He was on the Giselle? ground. Giselle 100% thinks Willoughby just died and came back to life. Yes. <laughs> Happy Easter, everybody. <laughs> She's so dramatic. I love her. <laughs> Soraya's like, I think it was his first time being bit by a mimic. A mimic? Yes. It was quite painful. Um, I've, Goodness I've me. never fought a mimic before. What? Show me this creature. Sorry, I just points. <laughs> and she um, walks out, affixes her uh, glasses, kind of looks at it, takes those glasses off, puts them in a pocket, brings out some other ones, <laughs> um, like goes through a couple of pairs, like inspects the, um, the trunk, kind of flips it open, looking for any signs that this was alive at any point. Well, it seems to just be a regular trunk. And normally they would oh. leave some sign. It ate him. Oh, God, dear, I, I believe you. I see young Willoughby's feathers are more than a bit ruffled. Well, all I can really say is well done. Such bravery from this incoming class. Really, what a bizarre occurrence. Can't remember any of these trunks having any sort of magic or enchantment on them. And I really must speak with the stage managers at the Rose Stage. They're supposed to be keeping their things in check, but all of our props should be mundane. I don't think this one was. Maybe just it was, judging by the bite marks. Maybe it was possessed. Or transfigured. Perhaps. I will have to look into it more. Well, I cannot thank you enough for your bravery. Especially you, young Willoughby. Are you going to be all right? Oh, yes. I'll be all right. I've been in scraps before. Good, good. Well, I... Imagine you want to take the rest of the day off. Um, well, not before we've finished our quest. Oh, the scavenger hunt. Yeah. Have you not? We finished? found everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Here. <laughs> oh, how wonderful! I do love those little pennants. What do they do? Uh, well, they're a wonderful decoration. There's a flag with the Strixhaven logo. You can pin them up on your wall. Um, but also, they all come with their own... Well, I'm not really supposed to tell, but you've had quite the day. They all come with their own little command word. You speak it, and uh, well, they light up. Oh, that's delightful. Do yeah. something. Try, um, light. Light. Uh, you say this at it, um, and the star in the in the center of the flag starts to glow, um, and it casts this nice, like, silvery light in about a ten foot radius, mm. and it's a little sparkly. Isn't that lovely? It's very nice. And well done. 
You know, a lot of people were having trouble with that art clue. It takes a little bit of know-how and a little bit of reading. Oh, I never finished getting the painting down. Oh, why are you taking the painting down, dear? Because there was a clue behind it. I'll be right back. Oh, all right. Be careful. <laughs> uh, Law, I think we found it. Oh, is that what the amulets were? I've said the word flag like four times now. It's a pendant. Not pendant. Not a pendant. Pendant. A pennant. Is that what the the, the flags were? <laughs> yes, yeah. dear, those are your prize. Truck, trunk, pennant. <laughs> I know there are so many words. It sounds so nice. Tomato, tomato. You're being a, a bit pedantic. <laughs> It's really I don't a wonder think you of language. understand what that word means. You keep using that word. <laughs> she doesn't even go here. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to go put this piece back that I took down. All right, then you all be careful for the rest of the day. Thank you. You ought to go to, um, oh, Fire Jolt Cafe. Uh, it has some wonderful coffees and and teas and um oh well the bow's end tavern as well if you are up for a little drink at the end of a long day both are uh, out of the uh the biblioplex and down a ways we'll get you a frappe have you had frappe um i don't think so it's very good it's very strong but it's sweet okay i like sweet okay you have small because you're small. <laughs> Too much caffeine. Mm. Mm. Ah, caffeine, not liquor. <laughs> All right. Enjoy the rest of your day. Do be careful from now on. No more scraps, at least not this week. Thank you, Yaya Kukalaya. Thank you, Professor Sharpe. But you're very welcome, dear. She just goes on, clack, clack, clack across the dial. I don't know who this character is, but I love her. Me I love too. her. I adore her. Uh, so what are you going to do for the rest of the day? I guess We're we gonna... turn in our clues, right? Or, or we don't we like turn in our, I don't know. Do we win do we by win? completion? Yeah. yeah. You, you just you just win when did you we go. do it the fastest oh, okay though. yeah we'll you can fastest. certainly go try to find out yeah i want to know i want to know who our comp who our rival squad is going to be for this mm -hmm, season mm -hmm, mm -hmm. oh okay 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 oh, all i know is more. that if if it's kadora's chat is going to have a fucking field day <laughs> well, it is try hard team finish for us. Shit. <laughs> i got you okay it can't be kadora's he was he was working way too hard recruiting that's true. Oh yeah, he, he was a lot of time. That's he wasn't. He There's no way. He did it. He finished. He's so been early. done. He finished yesterday, <laughs> actually, <laughs> before we even got here. Yeah. Uh, you. Let me fucking get some character sheets out. Hold on. <laughs> oh. Rival squad. Rollies. Roll off. Robot house. Oh, I need a fourth member. Uh, shit. Oh my god, is this our Star Wolf to our Star Fox? Need a fourth. Yes. Can't let you do that, Law. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> there he is. I'll put somebody you recognize in here. It's not Kadoris. He's been busy. Um, you make right. your way back to the Hall of Oracles, um, and standing there, um speaking with one of the librarians uh, who seems to be checking over their scavenger hunt list uh, to make sure they have finished it all. And you walk in uh, just in time to hear the librarian say, well, congratulations. You're the first ones that have finished today. Well done. No, 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 no fair. We had to kill a trunk. We were first. Uh, and you see standing there, another team of four. Uh, a very tall, uh, green-skinned orc that you remember from earlier. Uh, his name is Urzmaktok from the gardens. 
it was recruiting for the uh the plant club whatever that was called uh someone who looks extraordinarily like law fuck son of a bitch your sister uh another familiar face to a couple of you a water genasi pale skin facial markings long blue hair revealing clothes very smug fuck and a fourth character that you don't recognize um a human in a uh, very nice um high collared doublet um blue on one side and sort of a uh, maroon on the other kind of uh weaving into each other um strong strong jawline um prominent nose high cheekbones um perfectly quaffed uh red hair that sort of curls off to one side i'll show you his picture because he's the fucking worst uh, i love this guy i hate him i hate him all there he is oh my god okay I'm oh no he's <laughs> hot oh no he's I hot i hate him uh, the four of them stand there there are a lot of redheads in here uh stand there um and uh order and they um both kind of look over towards your group um order kind of gives you a wave uh they just has a smirk uh, on her face um the uh the orcish uh student does not acknowledge you he sort of got his nose tucked in the book oh i can show you him he's he's awesome looking also his art is buck wild oh, and he's check an actor. this guy out oh um, he's hot he's got some stuff going on uh, and this, uh, he ignores you, um, and seeing his, uh, compatriots wave, um, this human, uh, sort of looks toward you all and gives kind of a, uh, salute, um, seeing the, uh, the box in, in Sarai's hand, um, and the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, lists that you all are holding says, well met, our competition for the day, it seems. Who are you? Well, pleased to make your acquaintance, I suppose. I am Quintilius Antiphian Melento the Third. You Q. may call me Quintilius. Nice Q. to meet you, Quinn. Tilius. Hello, hello, Quintilius. I'm Willoughby Wonderfoot, first year. Oh, I didn't see you in there. He died. I'm resting. Well, he seems fine now. I got but better. He died fighting a box. Interesting. Why would you have done a thing like that? that it oh. was a very scary box. It had teeth. It was attacking people, and I. It I ate just... him. Wow. Oh, that's quite <laughs> dramatic, if I do say so myself. Hmm. Yeah, pleased to meet you. Box fighter, Catwoman. You too? When was the last time you were bit by something? Uh, well, um, for real or, or on stage? For I do quite real. a bit of stage combat. Obviously. Stage oh, combat. Are you in the when were you bitten real bite? for pretend on oh, stage? You all do tend to ask a lot of questions all at the same time. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, the small one. You can go first. Oh, are you in the live-action role-playing uh, guild? <laughs> uh, no, I take a bit of a more fine art approach. I'm in the play actors' drama guild. Oh, exciting! Where the real art happens. Hmm. Why are you interested in joining? Um, maybe I uh, I have a little bit of a headache right now, but. Uh, do you have any flyers? Of course. Pulls out a flyer. It's 80% his face. <laughs> Not a lot of information on here. <laughs> uh, thank you. No, I feel like it's really everything you need to know. All if you're I interested, join you us at the road stage. Well, yes. For most people, that's enough. But you have been bitten for pretend on the stage before. Oh, yes, of, of course. 
I portrayed Jason in our five acts, Jason and the Argonauts. Five Did acts. you cast yourself as Jason? No, no, of course not. We have directors for that sort of thing. You just seem mm-hmm. like you would cast yourself as Jason. And she's going to wander off. Well, well I was back of the group, perfect for the role. Staring at order, using their twin telepathy to be like, what the fuck? What the fuck are you doing? Why are you on? You know, why are you doing this? I didn't pick my team, just like you didn't pick yours. You could have objected. I feel like it would have to been who? the right thing. To whom would I object? The Dean? The Dean is not here overseeing the scavenger hunt, you idiot. You know she hates me. I didn't ask her to come here. She was just on my team. I'm mad at you. Yeah, have fun being mad at me. I'll hang out with your girlfriend. Not my girlfriend. Sorry, I can't hear you. My telepathy doesn't work anymore. <laughs> Quintilius has been talking this entire time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so if you're interested at all, it's either on the stage, if you'd you know, have the wherewithal to be able to memorize lines, or behind the stage as well, there are technical folk are really what make the productions go off. So I'm only desperately interested short of stage hands. if the next stage production is you actually being bitten by something. I am more along the lines of um, what's it called? Um, method acting. Mm-hmm. Well, my dear, if you're offering to bite you? That was the joke, yes. You would not survive if I bit you. Do you want to uh, die I too? I doubt it. I might be convinced. Leans over to Law. Are they flirting with me? Very <laughs> convincing, am I not? I missed that part of the conversation. I'm sorry. I was focusing on something more important. We won. You did not have to fight the box. We did. Extra credit. We win. Okay. Time for Frappe. Let's go. Congratulations on your box. Now who's flirting? <laughs> okay, we get frappe. Come on. <laughs> he looks at the rest of his team and they're like. I think even Irk Matok has like looked up from his book and is like. <laughs> so. We had to go get coffee. The little owl needs coffee. Cafe. Head out. Of... I'm sleepy. <laughs> Cafe. It's good for you. Uh, you head out of the biblioplex uh, and down the way um, to. It is now. I don't know. This was in the morning. How long Some time we... on the clock. How long did this take? Like a couple 30 hours? minutes, we were like, flawless. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect like a couple run. Couple hours. Speed it's run. A speed yeah. run. <laughs> it's like pushing lunchtime, I guess. So you head down, go to the Fire Jolt Cafe, um, find a table, and order some coffee and some lunch. And we've already gone over time, and I'm so sorry. I got really excited about this rival team. Uh, so that is where we're going to end our session for. We end with just Giselle like handing the little frappe into her purse. Do not spill. But here you go. Thank you. I'll be careful. We're gonna end there. Thanks, everybody. Like me today. Um, thanks also to our wonderful audience out there if you live with us on Twitch. Uh, chat is dying to know exactly how small is Willoughby the smallest um there you have it folks <laughs> do i just leave it at that it gets mm-hmm. smaller depending on context it's, it's yeah and <laughs> yeah. Good size. Like, yeah <laughs> right now like i don't know two pounds soaking wet but in his fighting fury uh i don't know like two and a half pounds or two and a half feet 
Jeez. <laughs> Maybe two and a half two and ounces. Half, like like two, two and a half feet tall. Light. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Give us like small. a dog small. size, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like small dog or like extra, Thinking. like teacup or... <laughs> Or yeah, like teacup during uh, role play scenes, and then like yes. shit during yeah uh, <laughs> during battle scenes. During battle scenes. Border terrier would be yeah. extra fierce, you know. Like. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Uh, all right, um, so that is where we leave it for today. Thanks everybody for joining us. Um, I had a blast, and I'm excited to do this again next week. Um, but before we go, um, have everybody uh, go around to tell you who they are, uh, where you can find them on the internet, um, and let's do stars and wishes because I think that's fun. Um, so everybody, um, when I got to you, just give me a star um, for somebody else in the cast or a particular moment that you really enjoyed, something that you liked and you want to shout out, um, and a wish. Wish me anything that you wish for to happen sometime over the course of this campaign. Uh, does anybody want to go first? Sid. Uh, uh, my star goes to Willoughby for being really cute. Thank you. <laughs> I love him. I love him so much. He's a good boy. He's such a good boy. And my wish is that we destroy the competition. Destroy them. Destroy the rival squad. It's on there. Tell the people where they can find you on the internet. Oh yeah, that part. Hi, uh, I'm Christina Sid. Again, you can find me on the Twitters at Greek Sid. Um, I'm here several days a week. Uh, most of the time, uh, I'm, I run our game of Urban Shadows on Thursdays. That's Elegant Creatures. It's monsters and smooching. It's great. 8 o'clock Eastern uh, here. Uh, I will be doing the Neon Gods uh, on Fridays. Every other Saturday, you can find me here for Star Power, our fate-based uh, system. I'm in Dusk Falls Dead on Sundays. And when I'm not here, you can find me on Wednesdays over on twitch.tv slash critical misses, playing some good, good queer society, 8 o'clock Eastern on Wednesdays. It's uh, so much fun. That's me. So, who else has stars and leashes? Otherwise, I'll call on someone. <laughs> you are in school. Rob. Oh, oh God. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is like awakening memories. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, You're 26. What? No. Uh. <laughs> what I'm doing. Um, stars. Wishes. Uh, I fucking have been in love with your cat makeup all night, Sid. <laughs> Um, so that's my star. Uh, I am notoriously my thrown together cat makeup that notoriously I did in like 20 minutes before I a call. Am a, looks fucking flawless. It looks really good. Thank you. I am notoriously the only person that doesn't cosplay on this channel, and like everybody fucking brought their A game, and I just put on a shirt. Um, I love your shirt. Uh, thank you. It's Avatar The Last Airbender. That's it's just so <gasps> it's a great I shirt. I didn't realize that's so that's awesome. Just, just thank you. Um, but yeah, I love your character so much. Uh, my wish is that I I want to fucking LARP. I want to roleplay in a roleplaying game. I can make that so happen. meta. I'm so, so meta. excited. I'm so excited. Um, but yeah, you can find me. Uh, I'm at bonus stage Rob on Twitter at bonus underscore stage underscore Rob everywhere the hell else because of character limits. Um, the next thing I'm doing is on Friday at twitch.tv slash Stella Luna. I will be running uh, a monster of the week one shot uh, National Park Service are a clandestine branch of the US government that deals with monsters and shit. Sid's in it. Wally's in it. Drax in it, Stella's in it. It's a whole freaking thing. Cast it's gonna be stacked. awesome. Stacked. Yeah, it's a it's a great cast. I am so excited for that uh, one shot. Um, and I I haven't said it nearly enough, but I would not have had the bravery to run or the inspiration to run Monster of the Week if it weren't for the very game that I played here 
on GGK Aww. in Slaying 101. Um, 100% inspired by your game mastering savvy and uh, and the crew Thank that we you. played with. So I'm super excited. Um, and yeah, here on Monday, M- Monday's Monday. 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 That's that's probably what the Norse called Monday, right? I don't know. Right. Thor's Day, Thursday, close enough. Hugin and Mugen, Mugen Day. Yeah. Yep. yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody, please stop me. I was waiting for her to say. Somebody take this away from me. <laughs> Who else? <laughs> Rachel, you look uncomfortable. (laughs) (laughs) I do (laughs) I'm always uncomfortable. Um, Four. My answer is four. I'm just kidding. Well Uh, done. Congratulations. (laughs) You solved my stars and witches puzzle. (laughs) Yes. Um, Were you still in character? Because that was very (laughs) surreal. Uh, yes. Um, so my star is going to go, go to uh, Val's portrayal of ADHD playing ADHD because <laughs> that resonates with me so hard. Uh, I love that. And I can't, wait, to, I can't wait for, for the two very distracted characters to be distracted and forget that they're supposed to be doing something important. Yes. Um, <laughs> can't wait. Uh, and then my wish is um for <laughs> lots of random background drops for everyone <laughs> i like i like learning random made up on the spot facts about characters and i think they're fun <laughs> excellent uh and then you can find me here on twitch at rachel Elizabeth or on instagram and twitter at rachel is the mess with the z in the middle and seven s and on sundays i play masks for now and D eventually on uh, lb hack month's channel and i'm here on sundays with my friend yay Hey, Val, you have to go now. I know. I solved the puzzle of like making eye contact and avoiding eye contact to not get caught. Because I can't on. see your eyes. With the hair. Just like, yeah. To be fair, I called on Rob because he was the only one that made a noise. That's right. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> get a mute next time, Rob. Why can't I shut the quiet. fuck up ever? Uh, I shouldn't have. I did. I almost killed you today. Uh, <laughs> I feel so bad. It's, Sorry, it's you would die. Mirrors on our channel, though. If that is any indication of how this campaign is going to go, yeah. can't flip and wait. <laughs> uh, My defense. Stars on the back. Stars and wishes. Uh, I really did. So my star. Uh, I'll, I'll trade stars with Rachel. That uh, the the flighty horny energy that. <laughs> that Soraya br- uh, brought to this uh, Soraya brought to this uh, journey is going to be very fun and uh, that interaction between her and Giselle uh, is just is just beautiful um, I'm just very much enjoying that uh, and my wish uh, my wish is going to piggyback off two of the wishes that have been stated or at least things have been stated even if they weren't formally wishes LARP I want a LARP quest line, some sort LARP of quest. like saving the LARP team or whatever it is. Yes. Uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe there's some competitive LARPing. Maybe there one of there's a murder in the LARP club or somebody gets attacked. Or, a like, murder? Not, not like a real murder. A, a murder. LARP murder. A LARP and they have to figure murder. out, and we have to go deep in the Like a murder mystery. Yes. Uh, okay. Would be amazing. I uh, and that then happen. also part of that was, yes, for when we split off for Law and uh, Soraya to, to end up on their own squad and get entirely distracted by <laughs> just nothing uh, the entire time and accomplish absolutely nothing. It would be amazing. But We'll build something. Yes. It just won't be what we need. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Law and Soraya's big day. <laughs> I put LARP quest in which Law and Soraya accomplished the exact wrong thing. Yes. <laughs> we accomplished something big. It wasn't our intent. And if there is a murder quest line and there isn't an Angela Lansbury style character, I will be sad. <laughs> oh no, what? that'll that'll be yeah, yeah Professor owl. Sharpbeak. Yeah. <laughs> Professor yeah. Sharpbeak. So Sharpay. 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 Uh, did you call her Sharpay? I did call her Sharpay <laughs> yes. the second time I caught well, that. I think yeah. 100% called her Sharpay. That is our first <laughs> high school musical high school reference. Musical reference. <laughs> there will be many.
<laughs> Snuck him in and you can to bet slowly kill Sid. <laughs> and with that, uh, I'm not going to sing the song as much as I want to. Please don't. Bet on it, bet <laughs> on it. <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm done. Good night. And with that, uh, we've gone so far over time because I literally cannot control myself when I'm in the spotlight. Well, it's all. exciting. It's the start of something new. Hi, <laughs> it's me. God <laughs> Quint- damn it. You just got to focus <laughs> to get your head in the game, Sid. It's you guys, <laughs> stop it now, all of you. <laughs> you guys think that Quintilius is from the book, but really he's my self-insert. <laughs> Love it. This is just going to be the status quo from this point forward. Stop! Oh, no! Stop them! Please, someone! Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, do you mean no, no, no? Stick to the status quo. Oh, how many times I've had to do that show? Do you know how many times I've <laughs> yeah, had to do that show? Yeah, we know. No, no. We'll leave you with that, everyone. We're all in this together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thanks for joining us, and we'll all be in this together again next week. Same time, same place. Monday night. Every Monday that we can stand it. Sid might not be here. <laughs> but the rest of us... I haven't just carry signed on. it yet. <laughs> the rest of us will carry on. And I can't remember any more High School Musical songs. So we will see you one week from today. But until then, good game and good night, Internet. <laughs>